actually. Yeah, managed to eat some bread before I... Uh... It was actually that kind of crunchy bread that has a little bit of a, su a sweet side to it. It was great. Fine. Yeah. Sounds so nice. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, uh, that was my Twitch front page. Um, that's fine. I Don't worry about it. Oh, there's Torsten. Hello, mm -hmm. Torsten. Sorry for not writing, answering your messages. It's um, yes, it's been busy. Where do I, where do I find you? Kapat uh, channel, Kapat art something. I don't know. Wilhelm is not here because he he's usually the one who pinpoints the Kapat zone. <laughs> Kapat art. Okay, there you are, Cap art. Yes, I got you. Okay, I wasn't following for some reason. I guess I'm in office front. Oh no, I'm not logged in. That's why. Okay. One reason I'm not in the office is because uh, there's uh, two of my colleagues in there doing uh, some stuff. Top <laughs> secret. Nobody should never know. But um, yeah, so I'm uh, in a little corner over here, and I set up a little still life that I can't really show because we're gonna do digital, but we're gonna do it from life. Oh. So I have a cast. I think you might have drawn this cast, uh, Dani. Is it the one that sort of looks like Audrey Hepburn from Breakfast at Tiffany's? Uh, no. Maybe it's a new no. one. I will send you a picture so you can see it so I... we don't play the guessing game. I mean, I'll see it once I log in. Oh, jeez. I'm having some, some password issues. Hang on a sec. No, it's okay. Good old Good Eddie. Yeah, I mean, I was talking with my friend Sana about drawing from life again because I've been such a photo freak lately and it's getting tiring. So mm -hmm. I'm so excited to just paint from life, like put some still lives and make them interesting. It doesn't need to be like the classical still life, but like I really love the last one I did with a little panda in there and I'm looking for, uh, you know, this doll furniture. Gold furniture? Doll, doll furniture, like tiny little doll furniture. Fu yeah, I think that can be very, very fun to do. Uh, okay. Yeah, actually, that sounds kind of like a cool still life. Deck mobler, do you call it? Deck I never thought. I think you mean deck mobler. D O C A? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, let's see. <laughs> The downside I don't like when I mean I don't like when I do still lifes like for example right now there's a reason why when you paint from life and you have something big it's best to back up until you see the whole image like your whole subject in front of you so it's very close to me right now mm -hmm. that's fine right, let's get going I'm still trying to log in so really commentary hang on oh you're breaking well, my ball which I'm going to ask the general question. How is everybody? Everything good on people's side? Uh, trouble logging in. <laughs> <laughs> I actually... I'm, huh? I said that's how I'm doing. I'm having trouble logging into Twitch. Sorry. I, actu I actually ahead. realized that I even have a code for Twitch. Is this a secret stream? I don't know. I, you didn't post it on Instagram. Um, no, no. I mean, I usually don't post. I just go with it. But it shouldn't be a secret stream. Okay. Man. I don't know. I don't know what Torsten is referring to. I'm waiting. I know that he's typing right now. Trying to formulate it in a way that's very easy to read. German style. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hacker voice. Yes. All right. So my question is, I think I'm going to do a little bit of a sketch of what I see. And then, of course, we're just going to go for it. Like, uh, I feel very confident in my skills that I can just go directly into color. I don't need to have like this grayscale wash that sometimes artists do. Ooh, okay, now I in your gorgeous face. You found it. I found you. Okay, I lowered the music a little bit because it was too loud. Okay, let's do it. I mean, I can't hear anything because I'm listening to you via Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you mute me. 
Show me the cat. I sent you a picture. Maybe I sent you oh, on okay. WhatsApp. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna send you the picture as well, Torsten. Eddie, I'm gonna send you on Instagram. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I did draw this one. I you it did. The I mm -hmm. knew it. It's in my, in my kitchen, actually. I knew you drew it because it was so like vaguely in my memory. Mm -hmm. There's Eddie. Cado de it's disturbing. Oh, what? There's something about this cast that's very eerie. Like it's creepy. In my opinion. I mean, Hello? it's like a kid kind of looking at something a bit flirty, I think. I think it's a shit-eating shit -eating grin. Like, it, it looks guilty. Like, it's done something bad. I don't know. It, looked like, it looks like it just like peed in your bed or something. I have no idea how to create... How can I create an image link for... Uh, it's missing hair. Uh, yeah. This is when I need Wilhelm. I don't know if you... Hmm? I don't, I don't know if um, my voice carries over when I minimize the app on my phone, but I was saying that it looks like it's got a shit-eating grin, the sculpture. It looks like it just peed in your bed or something. Like, it looks so guilty. Jesus. Well, well, that's a way of looking at it, I guess. I turned him a little bit yeah. to get some more light onto his uh, right eye because he felt like he was too much in shadow. What What did you say again, Danny? He looks like what? I said it's got a shit-eating grin. It's like an English expression that means um, it, looking like you don't mean well or you, like you've done something really bad. And you're happy about it. Okay. It's Good like to know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the most <laughs> shit eating grin means that you're making uh, a really annoying face and smiling, basically. Ah. Uh, okay. L let's leave it at that. <laughs> oh, Donnie, this is one reason it's fun to have you on the stream. Uh wait, wait, wait <laughs> someone wrote Hello Furry Trash. Robin. Hello. Hey, Robin. <laughs> Furry Trash is such a good username. I love it. Mr. Furry Trash. You you will be amazed, but some people have the worthest names, and then they turn out to be like CEOs of I don't know what companies, you know? It's, uh, it's, <laughs> we got to be careful. Eh, you never know. We might have someone that's like super important on some field, and we're like here making bad jokes about someone being themselves. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I have a question. So why is the chat in the blue different from the chat um, in the stream chat? Uh, well, I'm using a program called Restream because I have people on YouTube and then I have people on um, Twitter and I want them to see what they're writing uh, to me because it's kind of um, it's in uh, real time. So, okay. I guess that's the thing. Yeah, there's a... There's quite an audience. Um, Is it? Three people, plus... I don't know how many are in your other chat. No idea. So today, for whoever joined, we're drawing from life. So I don't really have a photo. This is directly from what's in front of me. We're doing hard mode, everyone. It was, did you see that when I started, I did it too big, and then I just selected all of it and just made it smaller? Ugh. Zeros and ones, digital. Look, I'm doing it again. <laughs> the problem for me when I work digitally, I, it, I don't feel the medium. I, When it comes to line drawing, I prefer doing it via... Um, Cintiq, where you draw directly on the screen. Now I'm using the tablet, so it's a little bit hard for me to pinpoint where the line will be. So, yeah. Have you heard of Psy Paint Tool? Say again? Have you ever heard of Psy Paint Tool? Psy Paint Tool? No, I haven't. Uh, it's another, you know, digital software for drawing. I think 
was it Korean or Japanese? I think it might be Japanese. Uh, anyway, um, it's like a popular tip online that you should use Sai for like sketching and use Photoshop for like manipulation or like adjusting an image or coloring and stuff. Oh my god. Um, like I agree. I've used Sai and um, like it's not even super expensive, honestly. I think that it costs like twenty dollars and then you can share it with someone so you split the cost or something um and they have deals all the time anyway it's like a very good uh software for sketching because it really does register like the input um going into your tablet way faster and more smoothly oh is it for free you said uh i mean it's for free i mean yeah. Hard enough. <laughs> yeah i i understand I, I didn't register the part when you said that you bought it where you can take it with friends yeah 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 i get it i get it i get it <laughs> uh, well, in cool Romania, we do not buy; we take, we borrow. You know, that's how we do exactly. it. <laughs> no, but um, uh, it's also not super expensive, is what nah. I was saying. If you actually purchase it, mm. I think it's like twenty-five euros tops, and then you can, you can, well, I think, access, yeah, you can access with multiple people, so you can basically switch or like split the cost or Venmo or whatever. I would like, uh, when we are done with the stream, you can show it to me because I'm always looking for easy ways out. Because again, digital, yeah. it's very weird for me. Mm, I really, really like Sai for like um, doing pencil looking drawings and stuff. They have a, a really nice set of textures. They have very nice like brush control and it's much more responsive than Photoshop sometimes. Like I think Photoshop, like it eats up so much RAM and stuff. It eats oh your memory. Oh my God, yes. And yeah, and then it starts um, lagging usually unless you have like a supercomputer. I don't know. Um, and it, it like glitches and whatnot. And it's mm. unnecessarily complicated for sketching. So I think size like very nice once you get used to it for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, um, right now I'm streaming. So my computer has like a, it's processing a lot. So. Mm. Yeah. But it better be able to take all of this. I paid a lot of money for it. Otherwise, I go and lose my mind. What hmm. you mean, my art isn't perfect? This program costs a hundred crowns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please say that again. I love it. I brought the perfect paper. How come my drawing is not good enough? Actually, a hundred crowns would be a really good price for sophisticated I guess it kind of costs like a hundred per month, but then if you use it every month, it's like wait. I, I I I realize that I keep moving away, like I'm backing up from my still life just so I can see it as a whole. So if I'm drawing like this, <laughs> you, you will see me on the image, Dani. Uh -huh. hmm. It's okay. I don't judge you. Yeah, I don't have enough cleavage, unfortunately. Maybe next time. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna work on art as well, and, and I am kind of like really tired because I slept three hours today. So I mean, I hope you'll forgive me if I'm not very entertaining. No, how? What? Wait, you didn't sleep at all since we talked? I slept for three hours um, because I fell asleep at like 3:30 a.m. and then I had to get up at 6:30 to get to work. Jeez. Um, but I slept like 12 hours yesterday, so I had some hours saved up in my sleep bank, you know? Yeah. I managed to sleep for seven and a half hours yesterday. Showered, boom, in bed. That sounds very healthy and moderated, unlike me. Weren't you the <laughs> one who sent me that uh, text about, don't forget to take it easy, too. Make sure you rest. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, why do you think that I need it? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like I can call them like assume when, when I notice people skimping on rest like I do. So you take care it's of the others. blind leading the. It's uh -huh. the blind leading the blind too. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, what I'm yeah. Saying. yeah. Get it? I get it. I get it. How the hell am I gonna no, do all of this? Uh, I have a door in the back, a plant. This is this is gonna be interesting, everyone. So again, for who's new. 
we're doing from life. So what are you gonna draw, Donny? I'm just working on my uh, my uh, woodcut print inspired drawing of a uh, so-called bajinga, which is um, it's like a very yeah bajinga. Is, like, is, is it sorry? Is it like it, the latest thing you posted on Insta? Yeah, I posted some WIPs. Um, it's basically a Japanese word for a specific type of image that's basically like just posters of pretty women. Um, <laughs> and they're they're very beautiful. Like they have really really nice um, like super clean lines and stuff because it's woodcut prints and they work a lot with like very flat values and things. And I think that's very inspiring for the subject matter that I'm trying to portray right now. Mm. Uh, it's also just, yeah, you know, like a fun way to do a master copy while also creating something original. So I'm like popping open, you know, 12 images of various Bijinga E, which is like pictures of <laughs> traditional beautiful women from the Edo period in Japan. Nice. Um, and, nice. and like the early 1900s. Actually, my favorite Bijinga E artist uh, is this guy. Uh, who's called Tatsumi, and he worked around the First World War. Um, and uh, his work is just astounding. So it's really cool to get a look at what he's doing. And, and Do you uh, have hopefully... free... Can you write the name? Sorry for interrupting you. He, his name on yeah. the screen? Because I actually want to check on this. Yeah, you can Google. Um, his stuff is breathtaking. Let me get you both names. I forgot what his first name is. Uh, Shimura Tatsumi, or Tatsumi Shimura, if you want to be really <laughs> Okay. Uh, there's a bunch of students over here. Uh, we, we have no violence at Sara, it's completely fine. Every, everybody's fine, nobody's tortured. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> okay, well now the stream is asking for my password again. Oh my god, and now I have to find a code to my number. It's really? also I ah so you just logged in on your mobile. Warum? Doshte. Doshte. Nade. Kurasai. Oh my god, it's yeah. so much fun drawing from life. God, I missed it. Shimura Tatsumi. There we are. Okay, everyone, let's uh, check. Shimura. Yeah, please do roll. Show everyone, because, like, these images are so fucking gorge. Um, gorge. They are gorge. I really like them. Uh, like, the way that he does compositions is crazy. It's all very simple looking, but it's it's so meticulous and exact. And I oh, love that about John. I know this oh, wait, wait, wait. Really? I've seen, I've seen his stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, <laughs> Maybe because I hope it. <laughs> um... Yeah, he's like one of my new faves that I learned about, uh, and and it's fun looking into like Japanese and Asian artists because I know so little about them. Like I grew up looking at mostly um, European painters and stuff. So, I feel I mean they're very good at simplifying the design of the uh, you know their their clothing. Very yeah. good at the organ organic way of simplifying with just lines. I'm very impressed. Um, yeah. That's the thing is like mm. it, the lines are so fine and thin, um, so, so it's like deceptively simple looking, and you might think that it's easy, but it's so not because they're Question. so exact. Um, what medium is sorry. using again? Uh, this is called woodcut, um, woodblock print. Woodblock print. Uh, it's a type of printing where you carve stuff in wood. I think, and then you squish it down on a surface. So it's kind of like etching a little bit, or like a lino print. You carve uh, into a block of wood with like, um, I mean, kind of like the etching at school, basically. You have these tools that you use to ch carve chunks, out, and then you push it down on paper after laying on some paint on the block. Mm -hmm. So it's cool that these are made with wooden tools as well, like these super clean, perfect contours are literally ch like 
carved into wood with like a fine tool and mm. if you make one mistake you're fucked so like i keep swearing sorry <laughs> you're tired i usually when i get tired i swear a lot so it's okay don't worry about it um you're, you're like losing followers as we speak because of my, my filthy mouth but we have uh, someone that did this uh buna marianne robin actually did this um wood blocking print oh yeah that's that. cool I, I'm trying to understand how did they did the colors? God, like you said, oh. you have to be very specific, right? The, oh. Yeah, and this is the thing. It's so representative of like just the um, religious ideology in Japan. Like it's so Zen Buddhist because this is art that requires not just like full attention it requires more than full attention to do and that's what i really like about it like it's mm. so unforgiving because if you lay on a contour like slightly off or something gets smudged by accident or if you drip some paint somewhere or like if your cutting tool slips for a second and these take so long like i think they take 50 hours plus or something to make oh probably my. less um but like that's the whole thing is you have no choice when you're doing stuff like this but to be super super present and that's like the meditative buddhist aspect of this art is um um it's it's really about worshiping reality and the moment that you're in because there's like this very deep awareness in in zen buddhism that uh we're all going to die like if you Listen to descriptions of Zen Buddhist sects in mm. uh, Japan and their practices. Like a lot of their practices, basically, um, is um, they'll meditate. Like the monks will sit in a circle or in front of uh, a rotting cadaver. Sometimes it'll be the, the like rotting body of a pregnant woman with like an intact rotting fetus and stuff, just to really, really get in touch with. The fact that death is inevitable and that um, we're like interlinked with everything essentially. And that's what drives this reverence for the present. So through that fear, you basically develop like such an incredible love for every single waking second of your life. And I think that there's there's something cool about that and the way it reflects in Japanese art. So yeah. Wow, that's like the Bonnie, really, thank you so much for sharing this with us i i love it i mean the fact that oh. you said what's behind it made it even more interesting it's it's if i i find it fascinating because uh, torsten was telling me like just knowing more about the technique and the artist uh, himself or herself like the way they do it makes the art more interesting oh yeah absolutely can, That's can you say i really if... like hmm? listening to you, i like listening to you talk about your um painting innocence i just found that video like a few minutes ago it like completely changed how I looked at that picture um because I don't know like maybe I'm lazy but when I see symbolism sometimes I don't stand there analyzing it I'm just like oh wow this is really nicely made <laughs> but then we explained it, it just added like a lot of depth to it can you tell um, us about Tatsumi Shimura a bit if you sure. can yeah I mean I don't know super much about him and I think that not super much is known generally about it. Japanese artist. Um, I've been reading more about Hokusai, to be perfectly honest, who is actually one of the most famous uh, woodblock print artists in Japan. He also worked in like brush a lot. Um, I'm actually reading his like <laughs> I'm work I'm reading a book about Hokusai that I got at the East Asian Museum, so I can tell you about him. Hokusai. Um, Hokusai is the guy who did the Hokusai. Great Wave of Kamigawa. Oh, okay, um, yeah, okay, that guy. Mm. Yeah, the super, super famous carving of um, the big-ass Japanese wave splashing. These are so place. pretty, god. Hokusai. Um, he's really cool because, well, like, A, he's kind of subversive in the sense that um, he's like a vulgar artist to art historians. And I mean vulgar in, like, the, um, the classist definition. So what art historians usually mean is like um, that he depicted very common subject matter and he used very common techniques for making his art, but he, he's an amazing artist as well. 
Um, and like most famous artists at the time in Japan, I think, were immersed in like a much more bourgeois <laughs> sort of mm. Chinese influenced imagery. Um, whereas Hokusai, uh, instead of doing like Yamato E, which is basically this like, um, you'll have very fancy, um, like Chinese looking complex scenes of nobles and shoguns and animals and stuff from like an aerial view or you'll have nature scenes that you draw on like a divider for a room or like um on a scroll and stuff yeah he didn't do that <laughs> uh and that was kind of what was super in t like that was interesting to um the nobles of japan at the time so you know like samurai and shogun were into that but hokusai what he did was he was basically like drawing prostitutes and drawing um like craftsmen and villagers and farmers and stuff which was very like yeah i guess just chill of him um i think <laughs> he's like, also uh, described as someone who hmm? uh, yeah go on sorry i i this image in particular i'm looking uh, at i don't want to talk yeah, no, it's fine. You can mm -hmm. talk all you want after I'm gonna say this. This looks very similar to Mobius yeah. for me. Like the line quality and also really? this kind of... For some reason, I looked at it and felt like Mobius a bit. I mean, of course, uh, well, people like Mobius were very original, dude. We imp we inspire from everyone when we create the style. But yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I actually don't know who you're talking about, to be honest. Hokusai? Was it a Hokusai? Could you write that? Uh, Wait, you no, don't know I mean, who Mobius is? Oh my god, if Hendrik was here, everybody knows where Mo who Mobius is. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you write this? Because when I Google, I, just get the, I get the Marvel character from Loki when I Google Mobius. I'm very bad with writing his name as well. Mobius artist. Can't even spell. Mobius artist? Yeah, Mobius. So if you write... Uh, oh! Jean I've seen Jure. this guy's work. Jean Jiré, this is the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see the, the similarity. Um, I yeah, don't Rob, know that uh, his... Sorry, oh, Robin yeah. feels the same way, because it, it does, like, that image that I also saved on the computer. Um, like, if we look at this one here, uh, with the bird, it's very... It's mm -hmm. colorful, but the colors are a bit dull, I presume. Like, this kind of mm -hmm. liney work. It reminded me a bit the previous image with a Japanese uh, artist. Mm -hmm. um, Hoksa, like uh, the funny thing about woodcut pr prints, uh, sorry, wood block prints. I don't know why I keep mm -hmm. seeing woodcut. It's fine. I wonder if you say wood. <laughs> you slept only three you... hours. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, wood block prints. I mean, they're like. A lot of them are really old, so it's kind of uh, the same as with uh, a lot of oil paintings. Some of them fade with time due to exposure to sunlight and stuff. Oh. Um, so it's very likely that a lot of Hokusai's work was a lot more vivid back when it was originally printed. And th this is the interesting thing as well about um, prints, like woodblock prints especially, is um, like they're reproduced not just um, through printers, but there's so many editions of the original works that, um, you know, you'll have like one series that was the first series that's like super highly priced because it's super exclusive and like very rich people from hundreds of years ago would have bought them and passed them down. And then you have like the later series that the guy probably made um, that were bought by other people. And then like progressively as time goes by, I'm not sure whether they go down in value, but I feel like the first series is like considered to be the originals or whatever. Um, that's a little bit odd. Hmm. But uh, I was gonna say, I was gonna mention about Hulk Sizer, hmm. like favorite. My favorite thing I learned about him that I'd love to share is the fact that he was a guy who strived um, to be so skilled of an artist that he could use anything on anything to make a drawing. So he would use anything as a brush almost. Like he was fucking, he was picking pieces of 
moss and covering them in ink and then dragging them across paper. Or, you know, he would use, uh, I think it was a broom, and go out in, into sand or gravel in his yard, like near his house, and do giant drawings on there and stuff. So, so he was just, um, <laughs> experimenting quite a lot. He was, and I love that playfulness that he brings to art as a practice. I, I really want to try to embody that because sometimes I, I feel like especially realist artists yes. we get this mysteriousness and you have to be academic and I so be... agree with you um, so... <laughs> it's actually like we started doing this a lot of us because we thought it was fun right so maybe yeah. it's good for to get that back from time to time you know where we're going yeah Inken oh hey Inken you wanna, if you want to jump on discord let me know yeah, I love that Inkin's here. I was just gonna say, welcome. Sorry, Inkin, I, I, I'm at school. A lot of busyness. If you want, you're welcome to join. Um, this actually reminds me of what you just said, Brit, the rebellion. Um, <laughs> we are a bit trapped, to be honest. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is about realist art and like European classical art that's so surf, you know? Um, I guess, I don't know. Is it because it requires focus and then focus kind of becomes synonymous with like being serious? I don't know. An interesting question, right? Um, you still there? Yes. <laughs> I'm, just okay. I'm just listening and trying to figure out how to answer this because, um, yeah, it, it is something that people are afraid to talk about because now I'm actually thinking about the time when the rebellion started, like let's say Picasso and all of those ones, Gauguin or whatever the hell is his name Guaguin yeah. or whatever I think that's the name so you know we're talking about oh we need to have standards in art eh? and then you kind of wonder <laughs> what, is, what is the standard what are you supposed to paint and oh it needs to be perfect drawing otherwise it's never gonna work like, um, I mean, it's like <laughs> Hendrix, so just paint whatever you want if it makes you happy, just do it yeah, absolutely. That doesn't mean that the fine art and academics is not fun. For some people, it's the the supreme fun, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, and I think there's, you know, like, I believe in balance. In all hey, things. Alex. There's a value to um, being serious now and then, because, I mean, you can't focus if you're, like, laughing all the time, or if you're goofing off constantly, like, at some point, you do have to get in the zone, and that requires a, a certain amount of seriousness, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, especially if you're working for, like, 50 to several hundreds of hours on an oil painting, which is what we do within realism, right? Yeah. Like, you can't be happy or laughing all the way through. That's not realistic, because human beings don't work that way, so... Well, the students, you know, they've been doing their test cast, and they did say that they felt uh, more free to experiment. So it yeah. was very interesting to hear that, because we told them, yeah, that's the goal. I mean, the, the goal is not to spend three billion years on something. Mm -hmm. You want to, like, experiment and, you know, what you get from the skills here at school, you do whatever you want with it. Yeah, exactly. Alex is in Canada, Alex Negre. Canada? I feel like it's got more to do with the emergence of photography than we think. For the first time you would ask, that's the point of crafting perfect realistic paintings if there's photography. So other things because gradually more important that photos can, can't do became not because. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at most art done right now on Instagram, it's very in my opinion, very photographic. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it has to be this standard beauty, you know, that you kind of see those girls on Instagram, and I fell into that trap as well. So now I'm kind of trying to get out of it. And I was talking again with Sana, and the, the way for me to get out of it is to just draw from life. Because there's a specific free a freedom when you do it from life, because you have a time to it. You can't always ask that person to come every day to pose for you. You have to memorize it, maybe reinvent it or do a sketch and then the next day you paint it with oils and then she comes again and you fix the colors it's a different interaction than when you just photograph the person i, I i'm not against people that use photography or something like that but i we have become a little bit stiff in my opinion uh, we lost a little bit of that essence of what makes 
okay, let's say not what makes it art, what the filter of the artist, if you understand what I mean, the the voice. Mm -hmm. Don't mix movies, movie fantasy art with classical traditional art. Uh, there's a lot of discussion Why here. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, uh, for example, I was listening to this very interesting uh, stream by um, Imbrenson where someone said, like, I don't understand why you think the gas horses are so good. It's, like, proportionally, they're so off and whatever she was saying. And then um, she uh, gave an example, this contemporary artist that in her eyes, uh, the artist draws the horses properly. And then I looked it up and to be honest, it was I can respect the the way she painted them, but they didn't give me anything. It was just this forced style to them that you keep seeing into, let's say you write horse paintings on Google and it's like constantly that forced uh, impressionistic style on all of those horses. And um, uh, then, uh, for example, he started showing paintings from Degas and uh, his studies, his little drawing studies or how he inspired from photos to be able to build a specific image that he started from life. It's, it's like this combination of curiosity, like the artist you showed from the Japanese artist. It has yeah. something to it. It's not just him randomly copying what he's seeing. He wants to show something beautiful through his own filter. Of, of right. course, this is my idea of what I believe that art should be for me. If it's not for you, more power to you. I'm not going to argue with you. But it, it yeah. is a little bit of that strain and Instagram has been flooded with this. Again, I fall into this trap as well and I'm trying to get out of that hole to just re redefine myself because I used to paint so much from life. And I remember Hendrik telling me that I have that strength in the first time I, I paint and I look at something, I do this kind of rough image of what I see and everything kind of binds itself together and you have this life into my brushwork and now when i started painting from photos again i noticed that i started inhibiting whoops, inhibiting myself a little bit i hope mm -hmm. this still works i just dropped it on the floor yep it does uh like uh the portrait i did of hendrik that is done from a photo but the difference is is really? that yeah the one that he's lying okay, down I mean, yeah. but this is what like, i was I trying hmm Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, I really felt like that was from life um, because it's so vibrant. Like, it has some sort of life to it but that you're you talking about. But you know why? Why? I know Henrik. Yeah, that That's... must be, like, a big-ass part of it. Yeah, it's because I know him and I see him every day. And even though I had the photo and the photo is horrible, like, the colors and the <laughs> flatness. Just because yeah. I know him and I know him for such a long time, I just painted i inspired from the photo and i just my my subconscious just went with it and this is one reason portrait painting which is hard nowadays because i get commission from people in florida and i get pictures and their pictures are done with their mobile and the colors are flat and i have to find ways around it to make a three-dimensional of course it's hard for them to come to sweden and pose for me so it's it's that um, cut between artist and uh, model that is hard to really bring together. Uh, yeah. If you look at Sargent and Zorn, they travel like Zorn traveled to USA and painted millionaires, politicians and whatever. And he was away from home and then traveled back. It was a lot of that. And I, I really, really want to be able to do something like this. Yeah, I mean, they were the like news photographers of their time almost like they yeah really were painting what was happening uh, in a way that fewer, you know, exponentially fewer artists do now because it's, you know, it's faster to take a photo. I'm not going to say it's easier because there is a whole ass, you know, like art and skill to photography as well. Like mm. a good photographer is not the same as just any photographer. Um, but um, I, I really like and agree with what Inkin is suggesting and that you were saying is... Um, like, on Instagram, you see this, like, point pointillism and this, uh, like, mathematical style where people just copy photos or, you know, like, objects around them. And it just kind of becomes rigid and reproduced in a way that um, seems more geared towards acquiring views by showing off, like, an insane level of work rather than... I know. In, like, 
yeah, rather than injecting some sort of life and spirit and like originality. But um, it's like an interesting question. What actually gets you views? I feel like sometimes I'm kind of tired of that. Yeah, mm. like I think originality can make you more niche, and that's both good and bad. Like. You might have a smaller audience, but it's a more intimate audience, and the mm. audience feels more like personally connected to you. I think that I was, you know, I'm citing the book that we were recommended at Sara, and I hope it, people are still being recommended. I think it was called like How to Sell. Um, was it cutting the um, band? How, to, how to sell yourself without selling your soul, or something like that? Yeah, like how to sell your art without selling your soul, cutting yeah. the rich or something anyway i read that and i did find it helpful so props to hans for that one um and i did like the the little section where like the the author she discusses this exact thing which is like you can build a fan base as an artist that's sort of like a family because if you tell your story and if people understand what it is you're trying to say oh god uh, then uh, you have like a more loyal um clientele and they're gonna you know ostensibly hopefully uh wow. pass the word on to the people they know you know they're gonna spread the word to other like-minded people and then it kind of like spreads from there i mean ideally that's how it works right yeah i don't know i know what have... eddie's meaning um I'm gonna take a break from this because i'm gonna get into color for people that are new on the stream right now this is done from life you can do this photographic art as well just by painting from life so yeah. today i was critiquing a student and um, it's very hard when a teacher is trying to explain what voice or style means for a beginner's artist because I remember yeah. my question to very well-developed and skillful a skillful artist was how do you know that you have a style or a voice? And most mm. of them told me to just keep drawing what I like because it will come through. I but, agree. Yeah, it's not easy though for some people. Because I mean, I think personally mm. that has to do with not knowing yourself sometimes. Some people haven't really found out what they like. You know? Mm hmm And how do you find that? That's, like, a really good and deep question, because it's very tied into what point you're at in life, what are your experiences, and whether you are introspecting. Because I think that's, like, a big-ass part of it, is are you asking yourself, like, um, what resonates with me? What inspires me? What makes me happy to do art? Some people just plow through it, like, it's, you know, just grinding or just uh, chore. And that, I think, comes through when you create a lot of the time. Like, you can tell when someone just did something because they think they should be doing something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As, as opposed to... Yeah, as opposed to um, what you're talking about, which is, like, uh, artists who find things that inspire them, that they fall in love with, you know, as Hans used to say. <laughs> um, which is, like, a completely different thing, I think. Um, and Inken said something interesting again. Uh, she says, have you ever had this feeling after an exhibition of, say, Monet, that you would go around and see the landscape in a similar way that he painted? Uh, that's what I think originality means. You contribute, uh, you contribute your own view on the world and you're able to visually show it to others. Um, I definitely get that with, like, landscapes in particular. What about you two? Well... For some reason, with landscape, you're not as shy as experimenting because it's not really a, a face or something so intimate that, uh, intimate as a human being. So if there's yeah, like a certain people, freedom there. For sure. Most people don't scrutinize uh, inanimate objects and landscapes the same way. Yeah. Right. Uh, whereas with faces, mm. it's very... Like, if something is slightly off, people are going to notice. I mean, we, we are talking about something so... It's something that I think I ponder every day, every day. And what I try to do when I try to find myself, I try to remind, what did I like when I was a kid and how did I get into art? This is one reason I like, I like this show on Netflix called Blue Period. Um, is it about money? It's an anime, yeah. Okay. 
And um, when I was a kid, I haven't heard of this. Hmm? You would think that I would have heard of this, seeing as I'm the fucking person with a Japanology bachelor's degree. Japanology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actual work. Oh, you're so cute. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. Oh yeah, when I was a kid. Uh, I discovered this magazine called uh, Great Painters, Mar Pictor in Romania, but before I got into this... Um... I was lucky enough to not have internet. So I found these magazines that took me back in the 13, 1400s. So I was introduced to art history, but thank God that this magazine was humble enough to not belittle the old masters and follow a history timeline from, let's say, Permigianino to Picasso. Of course, they kind of skipped Sargent because he was kind of shunned from history for some stupid reason. I don't know why, because he's, he's not really taught in art history for some reason. So I was lucky enough to be introduced to this artist and I saw... Diff I didn't see photo paintings. I saw the vision of Permigianino. I saw the vision of Giorgione, the vision of Tintoretto. So it was a little bit different for me than most youngsters right now that goes on Instagram and they see this painted girl with luxurious lips and a bit of a butt on the bucket, whatever the hell they paint for. Mm -hmm. And then they see that the guy has 10,000 likes. And it's kind of sad yeah. that I talk about this, but that the likes is giving the idea to this beginner that that is quality art. And then again, you know, what quality art you want, it's whatever the hell you want to do, fine. But here's something yeah. I talked a lot with uh, Nick and um, Anders. Um, uh, and this will sound a little bit mean, be, uh, mean because who am I to say this? And I said that it's a bit of our fault that this is happening. We're not really out there to educate, let's just say educate, I don't know exactly what word to use, to show a little bit and explain this vision and this filter and the complexity of human and, you know, the complexity of beauty and philosophy. We, we lost this. For some reason, we've become so rigid with everything that humanity has been through, war, um, beauty, all of this that makes us this complexity of thought and anger and love or whatever the hell you want to do it. It's completely shunned right now because people are so afraid of it. I'm afraid every day of my emotions, but this is what's what makes me do the art I do. It's this emotions because that's one reason it's so sterile, sterile, the art we're looking at right now. It's just what? Pretty girls? Um, photographs like you have this artist that takes these pictures using uh, uh, um, not exposure how do you call it uh, f-stop of 1.4 you know with that bokeh effect in the background and you see the artist painting that effect and for me that's not really a style he's just copying the style of the camera and people are so into this you have all of these iPhones that are trying to create this bokeh effect and uh, to be honest, like, I think that's a lot to do with capitalism. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay. Explain that. <laughs> Wait one second. Before we continue, let's see what people wrote in the comment section, because this is polite. Let, I, I mean, like, see what uh, get... you can wrote. Yeah. Just one second. Absolutely. Uh, Robin did a whip up print. It says... Um... <laughs> it would be funny if faces around you turn into Picasso portraits. Yeah, no, I think was saying that, you know, portraits can be goofy and playful as well. Um, which is true. I think that you were talking more about, like, realistic portraits, I guess. Or, like, impressionism, maybe? Because you were saying something about Monet. Mm. Um, yeah. Both Eddie and George, I mean... I understand what George is saying, but this is the thing with your style is you. The thing is that that style, that style, mm -hmm. it, it's it's so complicated and it, we can go into something that can be so hurtful for the uh, for the human ego that I'm not going to do it right now online because I'm too tired to do it. 
but I love what Eddie wrote. This is such a Romanian mentality. It's funny. Art nowadays is a reflection of society. This is so true in a way. So yeah, mm -hmm. with this, I'm gonna go into colors because for whoever is on the stream right now, I'm doing this from life and it's been, it's kind of nice that we're having this conversation. I actually like it a lot, Danny, even though you stay for like three and a half hours. <laughs> no worries. Um... Where are you seeing these comments? Because I only see two chats and I have I, um, I, I am on my stream and I actually look at the chat within the stream because Eddie is on YouTube and George is also on YouTube. I don't see Eddie or George. Oh wait, no, no. Yeah, you need to like enlarge the video so you can actually see the chat. I'm actually thinking of, I don't know exactly how to do it within OBS. I would love to do the, the writing a bit big, bigger so people can see. Hey, mm -hmm. David, welcome to the chat. Uh, okay. yeah, I was, I was going to explain what I mean by I think it's symptomatic of capitalism. Um, I want to hear that. I want to see what you mean by that, because I keep hearing this, but I don't really know how to register it. Okay, so um, without sounding like too Marxist, <laughs> um, a little Marxist, not too Marxist, um, like the fact that all the apps that we're using and the website that we're using uh, to display our art, um, which is like the main platform nowadays for advertisement for mm -hmm. our art, it's very useful as a tool to reach a lot of people potentially. But here's the thing. Um, the, alg the algorithms that govern those applications and um, a lot of the mechanisms that are in place, and I don't know, I don't remember super off the top of my head in detail how it works. Uh, and it changes constantly, that's another thing. But a lot of these algorithms that are programmed by like pe people in Silicon Valley who are, you know, they have mostly an incentive to earn money by these applications through like advertisements through uh getting lots and lots of people worldwide and i'm talking like million if not billions of people with their phones um to keep using these app applications you know take instagram or, yeah. or twitter so if you have that as your main goal then you are incentivized financially because you're making more money the more people are using your application to program it in a way that promotes stuff that gets views uh, and gets followers rather than promotes some sort of human spirit and romanticism that you're talking about or, you know, like this elevated, like, um, perspective of... Yeah, like being into this is a complicated, uh, complicated conversation because I know where you're going with this. Yeah, continue. Uh, yeah, so uh, moving like going forward, and here's where uh, e a sociologist would be better at explaining this than I would be. But the gist is like if we're talking about, i.e., pouty-lipped uh, girls who are photographic looking. Um, like, I would say, I would argue that that ties very much into who has the most money uh, and who has the most iPhones. Like, statistically, it is mostly men who have iPhones. Um, it's significantly... No, I have Android, I, so yeah. It's a significantly higher number of men in the world, even in, mm. in impoverished countries, like third world nations that have phones. Um, and if you are trying to get followers, then yeah, it's gonna make sense that, you know, it's mostly like skinny anime women with, you know, big boobs and butts and patty lips or, you know, like petite pointy noses or whatever, you know, fantasy ideal is fun or the photographic portraits that you're talking about of women are going to um, be most in line with what these, you know, people in mm. Silicon Valley in the US who run these apps want. And then those are the, those are basically the um, pages that are going to get the most attention because they earn the people running the apps the most money. And then it becomes like this weird circle jerk where if those get more attention, then of course most artists um, are going to gravitate towards that visual, like that imagery, like regardless of gender. Um, because I see female artists doing it as well. Like, people want to paint what gets followers because it's incentivized economically. 
Um, so, like, you're more likely to get attention and get a job and sell prints, etc. So then it's kind of like, to hell with my inspiration and to hell with, like, human spirit and, you know, creative zest and whatnot because that's not what's making money. And um, <sighs> so going back to capital capitalism, mm. bring it into a full circle, I swear mm. to God. I don't know, I'm, I'm listening. Um, what happens when you're making a lot of money and you're living in a culture that's promoting, like, materialism? Because let's face it, you everything around it. us is telling us that if you get tons of money, you're going to be happy. If you buy Armani watches or you can afford Gucci, whatever, uh, then you will be a complete human being and you will reach this platinum status of happy. And the happy will be permanent. And that's not really how happiness works, but... It's a subconscious mes message that we're fed, fed all the time. And so, the, like, people associate this earning money uh, with being happy, and then they end up wanting to earn tons of money, and then they spend more because they're, they're also taught to spend tons because we're, like, being fed the narrative that if you spend more, you will be happy, and then you end up overworking. And it feeds into this whole grind culture mentality that I really don't like and that I was talking to you about the other day is, um, like, we are taught to work ourselves to the bone by a system where wealth inequality is crazy. Like, most of the money we're making goes to people who run large companies. Like, it ends up in the hands of CEOs through various financial means. Um, so, the question and, is... And it's like a hoax. I mean, I don't think there's a conspiracy necessarily. I think it's just these dudes at the top who want to make lots of money um, while not giving it to the people who are actually doing the work a lot of the time. So, I mean, that's just what it seems like to me. But I am not like a proper economist. I took economic history for like half a year and political science for half a year, but so, that doesn't make me, like, here's the thing. If, here's the thing, because this is the question I ask usually people that talks about this. If you would have their money, would you give it away to everyone? If you had that uh, money, would you give it to the people? I mean, I would try to be channeling would it you give it to the it Would you give it to the people? Like, let's say that you have the money from Elon Musk. Would you just take all of that and just give it to the people? Probably not all of it, because I would want to be able to make it on my... Like, I would want to be able to manage a fairly okay living life standard for myself. But outside of that, I would be giving them NGOs or trying to make that money go... Yeah, you can't make them millionaires. Like, you will be. What? You won't be able to make them millionaires like you are. No, you won't. Um, but you can keep people from dying of starvation and you can pay for programs which promote education that will save millions, if not billions, again, of lives, um, yeah. which I think is a worthy I'm sure. cause. I'm sure. But what if your company is going downhill and then you can't do this? Because if your company goes downhill, you lose everything. What would you do then? Um, could you pose that question again? Three hours of sleep. <laughs> I know. No, th th this is... Um, so, for example, let's say that you're helping everyone grow, right? Like, you, yeah. you, you're a, almost Billy. a billionaire, and you want to make your employees millionaires, but you need people to be able to grow. And then all of a sudden... I don't know if I want to make my employees millionaires. Um, although... It, like, well, you will have a lot of money. You will have a lot of money. You will have to share yeah, it. I mean, why should you have you're it? You're like all? a billionaire. Which is mm. an insane amount of, if you're, if it's a, like, that is an insane amount of money exponentially. I, know, I don't even know what to do. Like, when I get like 1,000 euros on my account, I'm like, wow, what do you do with this much money? <laughs> I don't even know what to do with it. Yeah. Uh, people are writing so much in the chat. Let's see what they wrote before we continue to know how we can answer. George said, no conspiracy or agenda to enslave us and earn money. That's what I get from this wrong reasoning. Nothing to do with capitalism. That's very short-sighted. We do not crave the materialism, but materialism grants us the respect and love we deserve by default. And here we are. Uh, okay, change the topic though so she doesn't bear... Oh my god, George. You, you don't... I, I, George says some stuff, woke bullshit reasoning. Sorry, change the topic though so she doesn't embarrass herself. 
it's a little bit deeper. I've talked to Danny and it's not really woke bullshit. Trust me, this is the thing and the danger about talking about this st uh, stuff on stream is because people don't really know me and they don't really know Danny. So, no. um, and I'm not trying to paint it as some fantastical, like, again, I don't think there's a conscious agenda. I think it's just how human hierarchy has always worked. Like, mm -hmm always been people at the top who make good leaders but are like very removed from i guess humanism and, and empathy like you know, know. people musk and but elon oh what's his name uh bezos and shit um mm -hmm. and and surely like a lot of those qualities make good leaders um but you know left unchecked by political systems they go to <laughs> Okay, well, uh, Atelier Ayan is being terribly condescending. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I this mean, isn't uh... like something that I, I'm. This isn't something I'm pulling out of my ass. I studied this for a full year at university level. Um. Uh, careful what you study at the universities. <laughs> okay. I, I can actually explain from where I come. As uh, you come from Serbia and I come from Romania, we're both from that spectrum of Eastern European and all that stuff. And um, yeah. I, I was lucky enough to be around very, very rich people. And uh, Oh, I me too. You, That's why I say all this. <laughs> like, here's I, the catch. I've seen it up close throughout my life. Um, so here's like, what I, I noticed. Uh, here's my side of all of this. We, we don't really know yeah. how the system, where the system is taking us. I don't really think it's really a conspiracy or people, men or women, I really don't think it's that. I think it's people desperately wanting something more from their life to make it comfortable. I mean, I would love to be comfortable all the time in my life, but I choose a different path. You have different personalities, yeah. psychopaths, all of that stuff. It's like my father has a saying where he says, for people to reach the top, they step on bodies. Because he's seen yeah, people. For sure. Yeah. So, for example, uh, we had this family friend very wealthy extremely wealthy gave his money right and left to everyone right people just sucking out really poor people trying to just grow onto their level now he has nothing nobody's helping him yeah. nobody everybody's judging him oh you had money you had money and he's like yeah i gave it all to you guys to help you out now my company is not doing good are you gonna help me nah I, I, I need to I need to keep my family safe. Nobody's keeping his family safe. So it's all of this because um, for me it's not only just studying the economics. Of course, you have to also look at individuals and what they've been through. I don't think it's normal for people that are CEOs to just give their money just like that. You need to deserve it. And I understand that there are people that doesn't do this. I've my my for example my boss. It's also my friend. And I know yeah. the extent that people go to really help their loved ones. And I can see how hard it is. So for me, it's hard to judge yeah. people with so much, let's say, money. Because I don't know them. I don't know what they're going through. Presumably that person and helped I'm... a lot of people without us knowing. Because imagine if we know that Jeff Bezos helps people. And I've seen people lick. We have a saying in Romanian, licking ass. You know, you like really want, oh, I love you. You're the best person ever. And then they do this just so they can get yeah. a bit of that money. It's kind of disgusting in a way. That's one reason I was joking that you never know what we have on the stream. Maybe it's a CEO, but they're keeping down because if they say, oh, I'm a CEO and I make this much money, you don't know how people will react to that because people are, are desperate, mostly nowadays. So I have yeah. this. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to say, Gwen Peterson came uh, in the chat with some interesting input, um, who's saying that um, hunter-gatherer societies are often hyper-egalitarian. Um, oh, who's Gwen? And that is cool that's so, okay. Sorry. I do not know, but um, I, know I like that he's adding something educational to the chat. Hmm. Um, and, yeah, um, I, <laughs> I wasn't thinking that far back. When I said that, like, the hierarchy has been fairly important to human society throughout time. I, I meant, like, the last, I don't know how many thousand years, especially, like, from, like, um, 
I think I come from like a very European and American perspective, and that's what I'm talking about as well.、Um, mm. So naturally, like if we're going to be,、um, if we're talking about indigenous cultures, of course,、um, there's like a completely different social structure there, and I would love to hear more like ant- anthropologists talk about that type of thing because、yeah. really, really interesting. Um, Georgia, you sound like you study TikTok, not university. But this is the problem. Like, where's Georgia? You know, I like you. I understand that you don't agree with maybe my views and and Danny's, but we're trying to just have a conversation here. And I noticed this so many times with the left and the right and the liberals and everyone. This is our、yeah. problem. I'm not saying it's mine or Danny. This is our problem. It's so hard to communicate without getting emotional and just disregard. And one thing I learned from Dr. K, <laughs> learn to listen, man. It can open up a lot of doors. And even if you don't agree, just try your best to listen and just have a conversation without disregarding the person's ideas. Because if you have the patience, this is what I've noticed. I'm not judging anyone over there, but right now, whatever, I'm judging. So no, I'm, I'm judging. I'm <laughs> I'm a teacher. Me, Here's the、right. thing. I I am a teacher, and I have to find tactical ways of convincing the student that they're wrong. But within、yeah. that convincing, I notice that I'm also wrong. And one、yeah. reason I change right now when I ask my students, I try to listen more than I talk, because they just give me the answers I need. So just be patient, please. Even if you don't like, agree, really, just you can just leave the、I、chat、really、if that's like, the case. I don't want to push people if that's the case, but don't belittle my friend. Yeah, thank you, Teo.、Um, I was just gonna say, like, <laughs> yeah, I kind of want. If you disagree、it. with me, you're very welcome to explain why you don't agree with my point of view. Let's add、um, Wilhelm. Actually, I forgot that he's here. How do you add、uh, people again? There, Wilhelm. Yeah, universities、uh, in Europe. Oh, sorry. Hi, I just... sorry. Hi, sorry. What? Hello. No, I hope Dani will see it. I think she was talking when I started adding you to the thing. Wait. Wait, I'm. I I had the stream on, so I heard you twice. So it was like I was in a nightmare when I just heard myself over and over again.、Uh, Oops,、see. I forgot that people can see the Discord. Oops. Ah.、Uh, <coughs> oh. Yes. Now they will know my bank details that I send you. <laughs> yeah. Look, Alex Negra is on. He was waiting for you. You know what, guys?、Yeah. Let's let's stop the political stuff because we all have different views, and I usually what you talked about political stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's always, it's like I was telling my friends. Even art is political. You agree and disagree. You just have to find the middle ground somehow. Isn't life just an endless stream of agreeing and disagreeing? Ugh,、mm. God, I'm so fed up with that shit.、Mm. Uh, let's go to Danny. Let's see if she gets on. Danny, is she on? Look, Alex Negra, he's there, going like ah. <laughs> We're in the house, yeah, man. <clears throat> My throat What? is a little bit um. <clears throat> I know, Glenn. Talk... You can talk history, but even history has politics. We 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 tend to forget that everything is politics nowadays. You just can't. You have to be a bit careful on what you say nowadays. I think it's it's getting weird. I saw um. Uh, whilst I was on the boat today, I oh yeah,、uh, noticed... you were. What, did you just arrive now, or what happened? <clears throat> no, I picked up your drawing tablet. I met Siga. Siga says hi. Oh. So I, was, I picked I... up my I picked up the drawing tablet and I sat and talked for her for a little bit too long. Maybe that's、oh. <clears throat> out in <clears throat> out in the cold. That's why my throat is a little. Bit... <clears throat> oh, is it cold in Stockholm? It's pretty cold.、Uh, and.、Uh... Danny is like no villain is here. Let's leave. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, no, I, I read a thing on the boat on my way back,、uh, and、uh, it was someone who just wrote that they didn't understand、uh, today's culture,、uh, whatever, and they list listed a bunch of things that they didn't understand, right? And one of the things they didn't understand was like. 
where people are so aggressive when people have different opinions. And in that common thread, mm-hmm. there was some people who proved his point by being really aggressive, right? Are we and... talking about Dr. K or what are you? No, this was just on. I I just this was just I on Quora or something. I just yeah. I and uh, it was just this per like and this person who was like really like it was they weren't even they were sort of talking about the issues he was talking about, mm-hmm. but the person was like starting to in- insult this this guy personally which was really weird because that was one of the things that he stated that he didn't understand how that became a thing oh. uh, so like regardless of what they talked about like politically or sort of right mm-hmm. uh, the person started saying stuff like uh, oh, oh uh, you you I see that you're trying you're you're studying to become a doctor I am um, I am, you know, I'm sad that you're gonna become a doctor and you'll probably fail and blah, 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 blah. It was a bunch of stuff like that. And I'm like, what? Like, when did this become like about him becoming a doctor? It was so weird. It was so strange. Uh, and, uh, and the thing is, that's just straight up rude. I mean, I'm not like even not talking about the political okay, part of Sarah. this conversation. That's not, that's not nice to say. No. You know? Uh, I can't reach Dani for some reason. I think uh, I kind of fucked up the call when I tried to call her. Really? The life of How Brian. That, that was brilliant. What? I don't know. Georgia, hmm. let's just just leave it for now, please. Uh, I I don't really. This is one reason I don't talk politics. I don't like when uh, this kind of things happens. Oh. I love Romanian. Boy, when Romanian talks politics, it's on a different level. You show me that video of that person uh, being really angry. I was Marianne, Vadim Tudor. Mama, mama, Vadim Tudor. When that one starts, because everybody thinks that Trump didn't know how to talk. Boy, if you see Vadim Tudor, that guy's on a different level. Yeah, he's a bit. He, he. Uh, I would even argue that he. Uh... He's a bit intense, isn't he? He's very Romanian. <laughs> Dani's trying to reach us somehow. I can see her in the chat, but for some reason, started a call. Um, I think... There you I... are. Yeah, like my voice is still here, but for some reason, y'all are. Um, it's treating the call kind of like a. We're enjoying you being um... away. Like, it's treating it as though I have to put the phone in my ear, if you know what I mean. I don't know how to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it does. I, I know, no, I know what you mean, because sometimes uh, Discord doesn't want to... Because you used speakers before, right? Or... Okay, I fixed it. Yeah, I changed it. You fixed it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's talk about art. I don't want to talk about other stuff, but tell me about this dude that said something about... What was he saying? Doctor? What? What? Uh, Looks like I triggered a him really bad. I must have hurt his feelings. No, I don't think it's feelings. I think, uh, in my opinion, it's like I was telling Henrik, everybody's so frustrated, I think, right now. It's like when I talk with my brother, God, I don't, I can't even speak with him. Yeah, he's very intense. (laughs) Wilhelm met my brother. Oh, my God. Over, not in, not in person. Yeah, over, over. We were a having call. like a voice uh, video chat, and he was just going and going and going. And I was looking at Wilhelm going like, "This is what I grew up with." Uh, no, the best part was that you just you like Theo left, and I started doing something <laughs> on the computer, and he just kept going. Like he just kept going. Theo comes back, and it's just like what? And, and Theo comes back, and he's just keep keeps going. He never Danny, stops. Exactly just like talking this, and it's, talking. it's it's your opinion. Uh, you know what I mean. They keep talking and talking and talking and it's like you can't even tell them something and as soon as you say something different don't do it because it keeps going and going i love my brother going i can't wait for wilhelm to meet my brother it's gonna be great in real hey, life he's cool man yeah <laughs> I, I like my brother he's very nice uh... so it's like your siblings yeah i mean uh wilhelm said something that i'm very similar to my brother you said yeah yeah. You're definitely yes, similar. You're... Mm. Sorry, what? You're, you're definitely similar to your brother. <laughs> like, I can tell that you're related. <laughs> I know. You're, you're both very, um, 
You're both just very, very alike. I can't really put my finger on it, but it's like, it's the oh, way you... I want... Please explain what you mean, because so I've got <clears> this comment before. Because usually I don't know, I think, I think it's the way, you, the, the way you speak and joke, and like, the I can see how like... Because like, even though your brother is, your brother is a bit more intense, or at least he was when I talked to him, he was very <laughs> intense. Uh, oh yeah, he is. And I can like, um, uh, I, yeah, I don't know, I can just... Hey though. Hey though. Oh, she's still at work? Yeah, she's Oh, oh Sana. Yeah, she's leaving, hey. but it's end the uh, end of the year, so it's a lot to do. <clears throat> Here I am live streaming <clears throat> instead of like helping out and talking about what we can do next semester and stuff. Yeah, I thought I thought, My I thought people we needs were, me. We, I thought huh? we were canceling the stream today for some reason. I don't really why. I well, just had I, that in I my was head. Think, I was thinking about doing that. Uh, what happened? <laughs> Today it's been just fantastic. So here I am. Okay, let's let's uh, warm up the atmosphere a little bit. Let's joke about it. So here I am in the kitchen eating breadcrumbs, and then we have Lena, which is pretty much the rector, and then Sana, which is pretty much my boss and uh, part of the faculty as a teacher, and then you have no. William. William, our William that you heard before and you saw on the live stream. And they come out, with, you know, they had pizzas. They just ate the pizzas. And I'm over there going like, you guys had pizza? And it's like <laughs> guilty, like guilty face. It was so adorable. So when I was in the kitchen, not knowing what to say, we all started laughing. And I'm like, I was in the kitchen eating breadcrumbs and you guys were eating pizza? And I had to do a live stream in like 15 minutes. <laughs> Wait, you said that to the teacher? I did, of course I did. And then I oh my I god. About it. Like, oh, Romania, we are always eat the scraps from the ground. What can you do? Blue, blue, blue. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh my yeah. god. So, yeah, I didn't get uh, any of that pizza, but hopefully tomorrow they will make up to the pizza. <laughs> duh, duh, duh. duh. <laughs> yeah. I'm teaching. Hey, Phil, um, can you um, give Sana my best regards next time you see her? Yeah, yeah. We'll tell her yeah. uh, that uh, we talked. I will. She's mm -hmm. doing really good. Like, um, it was really fun this week. That's awesome. nice. It must have been super stressful with all the end of term abuse. And stuff. I'm still shaking a little bit from mm. everything, but this is just so relaxing for me to just. Oh, Wilhelm, I'm I'm doing from life for people that are on the stream. This is. This is working from life right now. Oh, really? Nah. I can actually say what's Wait. the difference between working digitally Wait, you're from working life. working digitally from life? <laughs> no, Man. don't say that. <laughs> eh. Okay. So here's the difference between... Huh? I'm like an anime girl. Me? <laughs> I try. I'm like a wife. Yeah. It's going now. Oh, yeah. This is like. This... <laughs> Let me finish this and you guys can talk. I said I can actually give myself 15 minutes when I just shut up and you guys can talk a little bit. So the difference <laughs> between digital, uh, drawing digital from from life and traditional, I don't feel the color when I paint digital. Digital, I just can't do it. Uh, I can see what's off in relationship to what I see. So right now I'm doing what I would do when I do traditional, just filling the canvas, filling the canvas, uh, put the color there, make some harmony and relationship between everything. And I'm like, oh, I just don't get it for some reason. And now I understand why most digital artists actually does grayscale before they do color. It's infuriating me. Huh? <laughs> I love the way you said digital. 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 It's me and Wilhelm. Yeah. I'm gonna it's, do it digital, uh, digital, digital, digital. Oh God, here we go again. Yeah. I don't I was... know when we started that, but that was just uh, that just became a thing in, yeah. at the office. For Isn't some it reason. because I introduced you to digital and then you started? Because it came from you. Everything stupid comes from you. No, stupid. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Stupid in a good way. Stupid in a good way. No. I no. no, it was, um, yeah, I think I was doing every time, 
when I was, was going to work digitally on the computer. Didn't I just say, I'm going to go digital, and I go, digital, God, digital. you always find ways of making things cute. Always. Let me hear you party drum. Party drum. This is Gotta another thing. I'm, I'm moving my head back and forth, so I'm trying to figure out how to not make a tangent between the wall here and the cast. Oh, Glenn, really? This is something that... I know what you mean, that the framing costs double what the print cost. Um, I had a commission and the commission was a sum and for my client to frame it had to pay the same amount that he paid me for my artwork to frame them. And it wasn't the... Hmm. Yeah, frames are very, very expensive. Frames are, yeah, frames are, and that is, the, that is one of the reasons why... I'm... Hey, Marcus. Like, because that's one of the reasons why a lot of artwork isn't really... Um, framed that we do what do they have uh, uh museum, museum glass you remember the museum glass i remember i was yeah i know he he knows so it was so expensive the museum glass if you guys are wondering what it is it has no ref it, it's a little bit of a reflection but it's it's um uh doesn't flare up the glass i'm not sure how to put it in words um, and it's really good for the contrast, but it costs, let's say you want to frame, um, a four, a four size. It can go up to, let me think about it. 50 euros, close to 70 euros. Ikea frame, David, you're such a true Swede. Even Swedish people like Marcus says gross. They will never accept it. I, uh, that's the thing and it's like with like um because i think i've only framed like in oil paint in oil paintings i've only framed one oil painting yeah my entire life really. yeah but oil paintings and, are uh, cheaper to be honest yeah they they are yeah yeah um, yeah whoa. oh my god yes they're whoa. cheaper huh what happened whoa what happened no i, I oh, oh i'm so excited <gasps> what happened the, they updated the twi Twitter analytics. It looks so much different now. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my ah. god. Look at so... They got like things. <laughs> ah. This is a Christmas for Wilhelm has Ugh. come early. Ugh. Apparently when, when, like, here's my main, like, like, for some reason, for some reason, so many social media sites have, like, really, really poor analytics, and Twitter just keeps on delivering. And I'm just, instead of looking at like the most confusing graph ever, just being looking at a nice, nice graph, like numbers and like straight up information. It's, it's something like oddly satisfying about it. Um, well, that's one reason I hired you're... you. Yeah, but that's really cool. I'm really excited. Yeah. This man loves his job and it's so admirable. <laughs> That's, uh, that is true. I don't know how I, he does I, it sometimes. I wish I didn't have to do it, but again, this is one reason I hired him. So I don't have to do some, it. <laughs> some, yeah. yeah. It's um, so much... Uh, it's, it's weird. I actually thought I wouldn't really like this job when I first... Or like I wouldn't like um, just doing social media stuff. But it's actually, it's actually not that bad. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's... You're like, yeah, I took the job because I was desperate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like, it's like, it's something I thought, like, I still think it's sort of like a necessary evil, but I'm like, it's also, you can have a lot of good experiences through that. I, I, I it realized. doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like a misanthropic or cynical practice to be like a PR person. I think yeah, it's yeah, yeah. a really cool thing. I mean, you show me that every time you talk about it. Yeah, and it's like, it's so much, it's so much, because I got this from, uh, uh, there's a man named Chris, uh, I don't want to mispronounce him, Chris Du, is his name. Uh, is uh, it the guy that you showed no me and you were like, ah, like you were very excited about it or something? No, but he is, uh, he is, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he just said that people sort of have this view about marketing and stuff that it's. It is like devious and like 
like deceptive. deceptive and then he yeah. made all these example of these entrepreneurs and stuff they're like like these are just people who are really passionate about creating you know a product or whatever you know and they just go out of their way to like they they, they want to maybe improve lives they might do something for a hobby whatever and they want to connect with people who have yeah. similar hobbies and stuff and it's like why are we talking uh, about instagram and all of that stuff and oh, oh let me teach you how you can use it but yeah i get it i get it i get it no, but for sure, like, those can be a force for good, absolutely. I've seen some really, really, I'm not seen, like, I follow a lot of really life-changing Instagrams. Um, yeah, and yeah. Social media can be, you know, like, it is the way that you use it. It is what you make it, right? So your feeds uh, make you feel as good as the stuff that you choose to follow, for example. Aside no. from ads, ads are just inevitably annoying a lot of the time, but get you get what i so Have like you heard I'm of brave. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Have you heard of Brave? Oh, Brave? Brave. Well, Frank, you're not talking about the Pixar movie, are you? No, I'm talking about a browser like Google and all that, but it's called Brave. Okay, I haven't heard of it. No. It's great. Uh, David introduced me to it, and that's the only one I use when I watch YouTube videos. That's the one I use. There's no commercials. Trying to get Hendrik to use it, but he's too stubborn. He's such a boomer. <laughs> Wait, is Henrik a boomer? Oh my god, he yeah, is, he is a boomer. He is a boomer, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he is actually a boomer. He is. Wow. <laughs> That's the door. Oh, no, but um, but it's fun as well because it's like it's 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 like what I've said to people in the past as well. As well. It's like it's so fun to actually uh, write to people on Instagram and actually like connect to people uh, and just be like, hey, you're not a bot. Yeah, exactly. And just be like, also like write to like, I'm at, um, so I bought my first piece of artwork, original piece of artwork. Did you get it? I haven't gotten it yet, no. Oh. But it's on its way. Oh, okay. And I pray that it will not, I mean, it's FedEx. So it should be, well, it, be I hope he ensured it. Sorry for interrupting the conversation. Yeah, I think he did. Okay, then you're uh, safe. I talked through the gallerist, so um, uh, I suppose so. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna. Boomeric, yes. I'm gonna see if I can find it. The funny thing is, I I bought it in the and it was part of the same show that Theo is in uh, right now, Labyrinth of Dreams. Uh, at Wowix Wow, uh, exhibitions. Mm-hmm. Let's see if I can find it. Have you seen? Uh, you've seen the drawing, Danny. Which drawing? Excuse no, I don't me? Has. I don't think she sorry. has. Sorry, I, I totally zoned out because I was I got into my drawing. I'm sorry, what were you talking about? No, it's fine. <laughs> I will uh, price No, later. she's she's definitely seen your drawing, Theo. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. yeah, yeah. Which it's, one? Um, what do you call it? What do you Escape about? the nightmare. Oh that one. <laughs> Even I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with the cool hands and the horses. <laughs> God, I'm so stupid. Sometimes I love it. Wait, wait. That describes like, like 90 percent of your art, though. But yeah, I know. I know. Which one you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cool hands on the horses. <laughs> yeah. That's my nightmares. It's from where I come. I always try to escape. Never works. That's one reason I came to Sweden. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. It's the only place I, think I can. I think the escape. people police would freak out if they heard you. Like, oh we my are, God. It would just break They're already a knocking threat. at the doors at the school's door. Dung, dung, dung. No, don't take yeah. her. She's our teacher. Save me. <laughs> no, she's here. We have strict orders. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but it would be a Swedish cop. They would be like, um, excuse me, what you said, it's it's not very politically correct. And in yeah. Sweden, we want to appeal to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> this is not okay. We are asking you to leave the country, please. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's such Can a you, uh, I mean, uh, you're not really supposed to be here, but uh, as my colleague uh, just uh, just said, um, oh, you guys it's uh, it's really, like, it would be really nice of you to, like, not <laughs> be here. Like, uh, it, it oh, really yeah, yeah. Talks. <laughs> it has to be passive aggressive to be Swedish. So yeah. it has to be like I'm sorry but like what you what you said just now, it was a little bit problematic. And uh, if they if a Swede says that, it means they hate your guts. It means they yeah. want you. Oh so that's how it works. Now I know. I know I know. If they say like uh, the if, 
yeah. yeah exactly that's usually if they're if they're it's them trying to be yeah there is, it's like i've told you about this before theo when it's mm. like like you have this sort of like you don't really get mad at people in public but then you go home and then like you're passive aggressive like outwards or something uh, like a little bit and then you help. go home and then you're like oh i'm gonna burn this person to the ground and you're like well yeah, yeah, how yeah. many times i pissed off marcus now, yeah. if Swedes come through their front door, they take a swig of like one beer and then they start screaming. They're like, Yeah, I'm not fit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. After yeah. being like, you really don't polite. Say that. We're professionals. <laughs> don't say it. I hope no one speaks Swedish in chat. Well, I don't know. Marcus does. Marcus Can we knows. Do- Oh shoot! Can we bleep it after um, you've posted Ed, it? I didn't say anything. It takes, worth. It takes too much. It then takes you go too much to the effort. YouTube's with all the Romanian politics, and none of them are taken down. You know, I mean, come on! You think they care about Swedish? Otestupa? Well. What's what's Otestupa? What? I bet the fun. Norseman show. Oh, you, you're referring to the comedy one? Uh, the Viking one? Well, the Norwegian show that. that's a bit of a comedy to it. God, I love that one. If that's the one you're referring to, Alex. Let's see if he's answering. Oh, it's a tradition. It's a Viking tradition. Mm, well, he said show in the text, so I presume it's something. No, he says go commit. at the super. Oh, it's a it's a Nordic rich it's it's a ritual where elderly people threw themselves or were thrown to their deaths. Isn't that what happens in Midsummer? Maybe I've never I haven't watched, that, watched show. that movie. No, <laughs> it's a movie, but um, is it the freaky I, one yeah. or something like that? What was yeah, it? yeah, it's a, like yeah. a horror movie that's set in broad daylight during like Swedish Midsummer. Wow. Um, wow. And wow. There's, there's like a lot of pagan scandinavia slash viking references in there so like there's one i don't know if i should even describe this but there's like a ritual uh, that i'm not gonna get into mm-hmm. i don't understand but, like what the like how that is a horror movie it's just like it's just sweet celebrating midsummer yeah like, like that's the, the, the... how we do things yeah i don't understand <laughs> like and people are like whoa no, i'm so happy this is just a movie i'm like what do you mean <laughs> The like, cultural honestly, insensitivity of it, okay? Yeah, man, yes. and they're, they're like, treating it like it's a horror movie. It's, I don't know, like, I just honestly... look at the drunken um, reviewer on YouTube, I think he's Scottish or Irish, I can't make a... And he made a review of that movie, and I laughed so hard at it, it's such a stupid movie, if we're referring I... to that one. I feel like that movie has, like, because uh, the movie... The, the movie before that, made by the same people, were hereditary, right? It's yeah, a really fun movie. Um, <laughs> fun little family film. <laughs> yeah, family fun, as we call it. Great for the fun whole for family. the whole family. Yeah, just a yes. little, little prime time classic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's by the same director, Ari Aster. Um, he made and... the, the witch as well, right? Mm, the the Witcher. Think... <laughs> That's actually not him. the The witch is another similar horror movie, but it wasn't the documentary. <laughs> Um, I think it may be the guy who made the lighthouse who did the one, that one, but don't quote oh, me on that. Um, the Witch is such a good movie. That's so good. Yeah, it was pretty damn good. It's um, it's. I was so surprised by how good that movie was. I was expecting such a like not a good movie at all, and then yeah, it's uh, it's amazing actually. It's so good. Uh, I was gonna say like the weird thing about Ari Aster is. You know, like, clearly everyone's deeply unnerved and traumatized by this, and they're, like, that's part of their artistic value. They're really, really good at getting to, like, really visceral parts of, of human fear. Um, but when he's interviewed, he says that he doesn't perceive his movies as horror movies, which I think is terribly interesting. He, like, probably... I don't remember if he uh, had a genre... In mind while making them he was just like i'm trying to work through my baggage basically <laughs> and he yeah. was like i just took my my personal baggage to like an extreme while making hereditary in order to process some of the things i've experienced <laughs> i do, like, I do agree with him though that it's like i feel like his movies are they're creepy 
and like the and I mean they're they're not really straight up horror movies I would say because it's I feel like they're more like they're more like art films in a way right yeah that's yeah exactly they're more like art films and it's... I love what sorry to interrupt quick mm. but I love what Glenn Peterson shared about um, that Viking ritual I. Which one? God, it was called something eagle. Was it blood eagle? I think it was blood eagle. It's apparently from one Icelandic saga and it's highly mistranslated. So that's like a fun factoid that I did not know. Thank you, Glenn. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying, Wilhelm? I, I hope... don't, uh, I don't uh, remember. <laughs> uh, uh, something about, about something about uh, hereditary. Uh, that, uh, yeah, it's more like an art film, right? It's like, it feels way more. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It was just a really nice, um, just a a really, really movie. cool movie. <laughs> just like a nice family portrait. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, God, it was such a, yeah, I mean, uh, and some people, I remember some people are, uh, uh um, more like, um, uh, like some people, I wasn't really, uh, like that affected by certain events in that movie uh but uh i know some people that were watching the movie was like scarred for like days oh yeah no but it is highly triggering especially if you wait, 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 actually wait, 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 experienced we um seeing death in person or experiencing grief yeah, well, yeah we're talking about, about very um we're, we're talking we're about to be very... after films because because like grief is I think the core theme in both movies in a way mm. um, and not just grief but this like cosmic interconnection between death and creation that I think oh. he explores in such a compelling manner I really like it yeah 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 you know, think, like, yeah sorry that no, burnt. Say, welcome to the cup at zone meow 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 oh welcome no blood eagle aww I used to think about the death grip song when I hear blood eagle I'm actually I curious think... about a thing. I will let you guys continue with the movie, and then I'm gonna ask Wilhelm how his baby's doing. Yes, ma'am. How my baby's doing? No, keep uh, working. Okay, I'm gonna focus into this because I'm starting to understand what the oh hell I'm god, doing. Oh my god! Look, it's a it's a Cox and Cox and Crendor uh, figure. Oh that my little god! Little face. Uh, yeah, the no. little face. I used to watch uh, Jesse Cox and Wild Crendor so much when I was younger. I still watch them to time to time. But that's one of their figurines. Or that's one of their like little signature thing. Oh. I think it's okay. Jesse. Jesse's Twitch. Damn, that's cool. That's cool to see. That's really fun to see actually. Uh... Anyways, welcome. Oh, that's, <laughs> I, I, I got like such a blast from the past seeing this. Um what was I? Uh, no, I, I feel I feel like they they really um, they really try and carve something out of you. Those movies, you know, they really try and get like I don't know. I really like it's. I don't. I don't even know how to explain like the experience of watching like Hereditary was such a. It really it, felt like a ride. Uh, no, it is like I mean, I'm so sure that. Ari Aster has done psychedelics because a lot of his movies contain like very trippy themes and very like mm. one with the universe vibes. Um, also, Glenn was just correcting himself. He thought he was ta- uh, we uh, he thought we were talking about um, et de stump, et which, de I'm, not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure which one that was. Et de stump uh, was the one where the elderly people threw themselves off uh, or were thrown off cliffs or whatever. Uh, okay, okay, so that's the fib, uh, and the blood eagle was very real, <laughs> which okay. is, which is um, pretty spooky. But I made it into the Witcher Gwent card game as well. There's like a blood eagle card, and it's it's such a good painting, but it's so gross because it's literally like, again, I don't know that everyone wants to hear that this in detail so i'm not gonna get into detail but it's basically like a very mutilated body with like yum 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 exactly like <laughs> exactly like in romania manner. everything yeah. is like <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like romania <laughs> like my heart yeah yeah, yeah it, 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 that was like a thing vikings did to people that they killed uh yeah. i forget it was like some sort of ritual 
and I would, you know, maybe Glenn can enlighten us, but um, it, it's, it's like weirdly artistic while also being terribly, terribly macabre. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What, I, what yeah. I find fascinating with this type of movies is like, for example, Henrik, he's afraid of sharks and crocodiles, yet he watches horror movies about this kind yeah, of yeah. stuff while Jock. he's working. So he's working and having like a horror movie on the side with like sharks mm -hmm. and how does one even do that? Can you guys work and have a movie on the side on the same time? Can you actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so I impressed. Think it depends on what you're doing. Like, it depends oh, on what true. you're working on. If you're just coloring a background in, then it's like, go ham. Because I mean, it's a very automatic process. He doesn't process. do it all the time, not in that way. Um, when he's having fun, he can do it. I, I don't know. It's very impressive. Yeah, but if you're, like, sketching a composition and you have to think, then, then it's like, no. Here's a question. Do you listen to podcasts when you draw? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like you're... What about you, do you think like you're focusing when you do it? Um, and again, it like really depends on A, what I'm doing, and B, I don't think that I'm always focused on the podcast or always focused on the drawing. Like it can swing mm -hmm. back and forth a little bit. So, okay. Um, I try to be in the moment when I'm working on like a base sketch and I'm trying to be tidy and think really hard about like, say, I'm doing a figure from imagination i definitely need my entire brain for that because okay. there's so much there's so much coordination that goes into it and concentration for me at least so in my process it's very much like um i have to figure out how this perspective works or i have to flip this image using my phone camera so that i can check whether something's lopsided or weird looking um mm -hmm. and and i think when i listen to stuff i get a little bit distracted and maybe get into like a more autopilot mode um whereby it's works better than coffee oh uh, sorry yes <laughs> yeah i was just gonna finish up by saying um yeah that autopilot is fine for like shading a background or like doing yeah. just a little gradient or something and coloring than it is for Doing that, basic. It's, it's the same for me. Like sometimes I can listen to podcasts, like when I listened with Wilhelm to Dr. K. But if it gets too depressing, I'm like, oh my god, I can't do this anymore. Oh my god, yeah. I actually have feelings. Feelings. <laughs> Ew. Ugh. Ew. Disgusting. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> I I have feelings too, you know. Mostly when I ask what for the fun. Fuck your feelings, I'm a robot. Yeah, I hope you guys are also looking at the chat because I'm so into this art right now. I, I love every... I mean, I love... I, I, I care for everyone on the chat right now, but please, just give me a break. I, will, uh... <laughs> what I like I like watching horror movies for the adrenaline rush and get you through the day, yeah. Well, that's a way of looking at it. Uh, right. yeah, Wilhelm, what about you? Do you listen to podcasts or watch movies while you draw? Uh, yeah, I mean, I usually listen to podcasts. I feel like listening to, uh, either listening to, uh, yeah, I feel like I focus way better, actually, if I have podcasts on. I feel like listening to, like, music or classical music, you can sort of get a bit zoned out. Um, hmm. But, uh, I don't know if that's, I don't even know if that's really true. I just feel like I'm so caught up in the conversation during the podcast that I don't really think about it. Hmm. Let me think uh, about it. Hmm. Can I think for a second? So you were saying no, uh, but um, <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I feel like I always um, I try and multitask as much as possible. Even now, <laughs> I have uh, way too many things going on. I was gonna say I have like two screens open. I'm trying to be look at like a bunch of stuff um what were you saying about the baby Theo? Uh, oh yeah how's your tank baby exactly that one my baby's doing great <laughs> my baby my baby's doing great, my baby's doing great. We're, uh, we're going up the mountain and uh, there's a big mountain and we're gonna climb it with a Can baby say? you're an yeah. awful parent <laughs> 
Now listen here, baby. This is how we do it. it reminds me of that video. Uh, what was it? Johnny, Johnny, yes, Papa. Eating candy, candy, no, no Papa. papa. Uh, telling lies, no papa. no, papa. Open your mouth. <laughs> yeah, that entire, that entire, it's so good. I'm, I'm, I'm in between squinting and also um, opening up my eyes because the reason I want to squint is to simplify the information in front of me a little bit more because when I blur out my vision, for some reason, when I have glasses on, it's a little bit harder to do or I'm just very tired. So, I don't know. I mean, squinting doesn't really help right now because everything just blends into the background, but it does give me an idea of the values. So, for example, I love squinting and blurring. I'm a little bit in between. In some cases, I notice squinting doesn't help because it overexposes, um, over darkens the shadows. So when I look in the shadow, I just try to blur out to see and feel the color within the cast. So what I'm doing right now, I'm pretty much flattening the shadows. I'm trying to to don't draw, because this is the thing with digital. I'm used to drawing when I do digital. So I'm trying to do it as I do it with traditional, <clears throat> just working big lumps of color. So you guys at the point saw that I just stopped fiddling around and just started putting down some big blobs so I can see where my value scheme is at and also what colors I need to change. Uh, so yeah, I do both ways, even though I think I blur more than squinting. Mm. Yeah, well, Marcus, I'm exactly like you. That's exactly how it is for me. Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 I used to. Yeah, audiobooks are a bit too. And... But I asked, maybe you already read this. I don't even know because I, I zoned out again. But um, hey, are you squinting a lot or are you just really high? Um, maybe it's 50 /50. Oh, yeah, I already kind of explained it a little bit. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not going to go into details on why I'm squinting all the time, okay? It's my business. <laughs> my business alone. My Get baby. out of here. <laughs> Get off my property. Get out Get of my property. You don't Get like off it, my switch lawn. it off. No, but going Gosh, back to the baby. So you're going up the mountain, okay. Going back to the baby. Yeah, <laughs> it's back. great, man. I got some. Uh, I got some new cosmetic items I'm using. I am. Uh, I built a. I built a safe house. I am, oh my gosh, uh, it's like Fallout 4 a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I love that game so much. It's so yeah. much fun. I like it's, the visual. Uh, it's got like a cool, like sci-fi design. Oh mm -hmm. my god, doesn't it have like the guy from like you know the zombie movies? Norman <laughs> Reedus and the Funky Fetus. Yeah, like, so Norman Reedus. I, that's what I. I wish that was the tag, like, or the 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 slogan for the game. Just Norman Reedus and his fetus or something. It would have been great. <laughs> it describes it perfectly. I mean, you're just a man with a fetus climbing up hills and delivering packages. Wait, you're a fetus? No. Yeah, but you, have, mean... you have a baby in a tube. Oh. Aren't we all really... Aren't we all a fetus? That is mm, gross. Yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm um, an adult. I'm, I'm a fetus in the body of an adult. Um, look, surprise, I'm pregnant. No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Unless I wait, 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 Who's wait. the man? So, Marcus B said, uh, love listening to audiobooks when cleaning. Sometimes I have to turn it off because I need to concentrate more, but it also makes the process more enjoyable for me. It's a compromise of sorts, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Because, like, sometimes it steals your brain, right? Like, if, if what they're saying is really interesting, it's so easy to be like, wait, what What was I drawing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, yeah, I feel like with audiobooks, I, can, I cannot like listen to audiobooks and work i tried it and i realized that i can't but you listen to the stream this is interesting like because it's it's, like, it's way easier to listen on a conversation than listening to someone reading a book out loud yeah i agree because it's it's i feel like we're not used to hearing people like we're very used to um hearing conversation but we're not really used to hearing someone reading a book out loud 
Well, also, uh, with books, there's more complex sentences and terminology, usually, depending on what you're listening to. Exactly. Of but, like, sometimes, if you're listening to something brainy, say you're listening to like, a science. I have the key. Someday. No, I have the key. Um, I think you can lock it, and it's fine. Just to be yeah, like, sure. Are you good? Yeah. One second, guys. Yeah, I'm good. I'm having this. You're online. Yeah, I'm online. <laughs> I told them about You don't need to wave. What's on the screen, Sana? That's yeah, Lena. I think. The oh, you Lena. Yeah, that's one reason we don't trust you Swedish people. <laughs> Eating pizza behind our backks. trying to figure out the time because I wanted to boil some eggs because I'm doing the stream and I'm eating their broad breadcrumbs <laughs> and then you guys come out with two freaking pizzas and I'm like wow thanks <laughs> it was funny uh you owe me a pizza we'll see you tomorrow yes yeah. yeah 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 I'm uh, leaving on Saturday nice. yeah good have a nice evening hello yeah wait are you gonna be on the same uh, train oh, as yeah, Aaron definitely. Yeah, yeah, I always check because I, I don't trust the, the doors must be closed. Ciao. So, so Wilhelm, um, was, does Norman read this? Oh, pe uh, oh, people have heard the conversation. I thought it wasn't that loud. <laughs> God. Does Norman read this? Like, um, have a fetus? Yes. Yeah, I mean, does he breastfeed his fetus? Does he have a past No, life? so, okay, so the, the lore in this game is the most insane thing. Like, it's, um, no one in the game really knows why the babies work. So, I mean, this is not a spoiler for this. The game has been out for three years, I feel like. I just go for it. Wanna, if people yeah. don't want to hear it, just leave the stream. Or so mute this us. is what I know so far about Norman Reedus and his fetus. Um, so Norman Reedus, as a, in this world, uh, the world got fucked by something called the Death Stranding. Okay. And uh, I don't know what that is, um, but apparently they got a bit. Uh, the world just got into this apocalyptic scenario, right, because of the Death Stranding. So and... is, is Kojima the only person who knows what that is? No, I think I think you can you figure it out eventually. Because I, I feel like we're about to know what it is. I just feel like I need to read through all the documents I found because you have to read the lore in this game. So. Oh, God, reading and educating <laughs> yourself. But it's, Pay attention, ew. So it's like the Death, Stranding, <laughs> the Death Stranding happened and they figure out that there is actually... And, like, there's a, like... How do I even explain this plot? So, the Death Stranding happens, and they figure out that every single person, like the afterlife, sort of is like a beach or something, oh. right? Okay. Um, so, isn't it like purgatory or something? Yeah, I think the beach. The beach is either the afterlife or purgatory. Of the beach. Cool, cool. And um, so everyone has their own beach, uh, but then they figure out that uh, what happens is that there's something called the BTs. And they're these um, black creatures that that is like haunt, like hunting humans and shit. Or they they're, yeah. they're, they like they're the the black gooey creatures that um, like caused the entire apocalypse really. Because what from what I can gather, Death Stranding has created the BTS. And what the BTS are, they're like um, they're basically um, um, taking they're not these. Uh, the BTs, not BGs, right? Yeah, BTs, yeah. B so they're basically um, past people, like people that have died but are still like in some sort of, they're between living and living and dying. Mm. So they come back as BTs. And if you get killed by a BT, so this is the cool thing. It's so dope. So if you die, you... It cannot, um, um, you can't really, 
leave the corpse there. You have to do either put it somewhere like far away, uh, or you have to put it in an incinerator, right? And because otherwise, it will turn, it will t turn into a BT, I think. Oh. And if you get killed by a BT. Uh, you also get turned into BT, but this monster like eats you, and like the the BT, like the Papa BT eats you, and, Daddy BT, and then just this huge like it's like a nuclear explosion almost just happens, and uh, that's hot, literally that's that's pretty bad, and <laughs> uh, so that's that's pretty fucked. Uh, and uh, like it creates this giant crater, and um, so that's the BTs. And Norman Reedus is uh, in the beginning. He has a fetus. In the beginning, he doesn't have a fetus. It's like a, it's like a Dr. Seuss rhyme. <laughs> Norman Reedus and his fetus. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking green eggs and ham all over again. Alex, if you're listening, one day I really want to sit down with you yeah. so you can explain to me how to handle colors in Photoshop. Because it does feel a bit weird for me, and I know that you're pretty good at it. Mm. Sorry for interrupting you but, guys. But uh, Norman, in the, beginning, no in the beginning of the game, Norman Reedus does not have a fetus. So yeah. uh, Norman Reedus is part of a group of people called something. And I've forgotten the fucking name of it, but I don't. I, I, it's so many names in this in this thing that I'm just getting so tired of it. But so Norman Reedus you, is a special kind of human that he can sense BTs, so he can see their footsteps and stuff, and and he can do other stuff. I don't fucking know. But he he he's a special kind of human because of his genes or whatever, right? So every time, every time BTs are close or whatever, he starts crying. Aww. God knows, God knows why. It's something about Kirillium, and that's also another thing. There's something called Kirillium, and that's in the atmosphere, and that can cause Kirillium rain. And Kirillium is a material that causes items to rapidly age. Uh, and it causes people to age, so every time it starts to rain in the game, you have to put on a hoodie. Because if oh. you get hit by the rain, you will start to age really fast until you die. And you won't be welcome in, in LA anymore. Yes. <laughs> what? You can't go to Hollywood looking like that. Sorry. Um, yeah, Norman Reed, yeah, Norman Reedus will get... Anyways. He's not gonna so... get rules if, if he... Yeah. Okay. So... I'm thinking... Norman Norman Reedus, uh, yeah. So whatever. So so that's a thing, and that's pretty wild and annoying. And um, Norman Reedus is also a nut. Like he's he has two genetic things. So he doesn't only have the thing that he can send his BTs and shit. He can also uh, how do I even say this? He can also like return from the dead. Which is quite a remarkable ability, uh, I got. I got to say, so. So he's basically Jesus. Yeah. Uh, the Norman readers, without his fetus, can return to from the dead. So what happens is that when he gets killed, or, and, he gets he goes to the, to the strand. Yes. So. Fuck. I mean, I feel like I'm a crazy person trying this to explain it. This is actually fun like, trying to listen to you say all of this it, stuff. It, it's so... But it's like, it's Kojima has decided that I'm going to name everything like 50 million things. So it's not like the afterlife or like the purgatory. Everything has its own names. So uh, Smart. So the strand is the... Af uh, uh, the beach is the afterlife. The strand is the thing between the afterlife and the living world. And it's the when strand. And yeah, exactly. It's it's the strand, the strand. Then, so nice. when he ends up in stranden, in, in the strand, <laughs> uh, he can pull his yeah. soul back into his body and return to life. <laughs> oh, that's a way of doing it. And uh, 
that makes him uh, a really cool and special kind of man. And uh, my kind of guy. And uh, so Sam uh, is just an your average guy. Uh, so Norman Reedus' uh, name is uh, is Sam in the show. Sam Porter Bridges. And uh, Sam is just a normal delivery man delivering his way through life. Well, finally, I mean, can it... be a delivery man. And uh, he... yeah, like I've been waiting on the Fudora representation for so long, and I finally. It's really <laughs> like it's so funny. I was walking with my backpack uh... the other day, and I almost slipped, and it felt like I was playing the Stranding. <laughs> it's the Tetris effect. Have you guys yeah. heard of that concept? No. So the Tetris effect is the term that was coined uh, to describe what happens to people who like, because Tetris is one of the early classics of video gaming. Um, people would play it for so long that they they go to sleep and they would see Tetris pieces falling in front of their eyes when they close their eyes. Whoa, and, really? Yeah, and that's yeah. now used as wow. a general mon like it's a general term to describe uh, what happens when you play so much of a game that you you close your eyes or you are living that game like you close your eyes and you see it or you interact with the world around you and you feel like you're playing the game um yeah yeah i mean that that yeah it it, it sort of felt like it because and that's when i realized that uh don't forget the job it's based on real life i was gonna say yeah. What do you mean? Marcus, he's, he's, he's writing, Glenn as well. They're like sad that you guys are not responding. Oh no! no what he, they I'm wrote so just sorry. now, man. They wrote like... Uh, I know, but we need to be very fast, otherwise we lose people. Kojima lurking, oh, I'm 14 and this is Steve, to stay together the script for this game. I mean, the, the game is really fun and really good though. I gotta I Not gotta in Hendrik's say. terms. Hendrik no, but Hen it. Hendrik doesn't like anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. But That's I mean, it's, it's, it's like a really, it's like a really, really cool because so whatever, just I need, I need like just to focus on trying to tell this story because I'm going to lose track. I feel oh, like wait, you bit. haven't finished? <laughs> no, but uh, anyways, you're Sam Porter Bridges oh, and you're God. a delivery man. But then they find out that you're like this, this crazy person and, and or like you're this really cool person. And on the way you, you, because if normal people, for normal people to sense BTs, these invisible creatures, uh, they, uh, uh, oh wait, I can actually, I can type that. Danny. No, Donnie, eh, people, uh, they don't like you. What? Just, no, Where? it's, uh, it's just, uh, like, okay. Who don't like me? I don't like you. Nightbot. Nightbot. Really? Yeah, we have but, something uh, so, against spammers. So... Sorry, Will. Oh, yeah, yeah. So basically, so um, so to sense the BTs for normal people, they have something called a BB, which is a baby in a jar, and that baby in a jar is connected to some sort of sensor that can sense the BTs, and and what happens is that uh, oh the gosh. baby is the or the baby the fetus. Uh, is connected to both the living world and the dead world because it's been taken this is this is like i don't understand who comes up with these this shit but it's like it's it's madness so the the reason why they're the, the bbs are connected that can see bts is because they're connected to the living world and the dead world because their mom is is dead and they they pull the babies out of the dead mom's Wish this womb was alcohol. and keeps them in keeps and puts them in a jar so they're <laughs> connected to their dead mom which right. is the dead world and they're connected to the living world through you know whatever and that's what i know about the babies uh and uh, so that sounds a little bit dark soulsy to me i don't know why exactly but it does yeah or like there. Silent Hill. -y. So I feel like Silent Hill plays a lot with like fertility horror. Yeah, I feel like I, Silent Hill. The Silent Hill series is one of my favorite series, just because they they are so weird and good. Like, like uh, uh, it just 
feel as though a lot of the really good horror, uh, particularly in, like, Japan, is very tied to, and I guess outside of Japan, like, if you look at old fairy tales and stuff that were supposed to be scary, a lot of it had some connection to, like, reproduction and pregnancy and sexuality and stuff. It's interesting. Uh, and, like, Silent Hill are really the first game with all sorts of... Yeah. Oh, the creepy fetus stuff. I've, yeah, I've been watching so many videos talking about why. Because <laughs> Silent, Silent Hill 2. I played I it. I didn't play it when I was story. young, but I played it later <laughs> in life. Uh, oh, yeah, I see what they're writing. <laughs> Marcus, thank you, Wilhelm. I want to read this. Thank you, Wilhelm, for the explanation. Just as much as before. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'm not saying that I understand the game at all. I mean, I'm like 15 hours into this game. I and can I'm just. Fuck I imagine him saying it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the thing, the thing. So like, it's like fucking. This game is like having, like, it's really fun and really good. But then you meet characters like Die Hard Man and <laughs> Dead Man, and that's oh, when you no realize way. that this is made by a Japanese company. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's like yes, the what's oh welcome. This is the president of the of the uh, the United States. What's her name? Her name is Bridget Bridges. <laughs> Calm the fuck on. Oh, Yo, like, I, enough, I that... enough with the fucking bridges, man. Yeah, I, I really felt that when I was playing. Um, I was playing <laughs> Resident Evil recently. I think it was the, was it Resident Evil Four, mm. um, or two? I forget. Anyway, yeah. uh, it's so funny because like they, they start the game with um, Leon. The main character like out on a mission he, he's like with the cia or something or the fbi i forgot i think it was the cia anyway his, his mission is to save the president's daughter from kidnappers oh and, yeah oh my god yeah. i played that game yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you see um you see like these allegedly american characters who all look like K-pop stars. Like, they have really <laughs> fucking, like, smooth facial contours with, like, monoliths almost. Like, or, like, women. fairly visible eyelids. Up and, and uh, like, ethnically, they do not look like your average white American. But it's, like, trying to be Asian and Western at the same time. It's very yeah. interesting, the character designs. Because that's the game, right, with the, <laughs> the, ele the elevator scene, right? Like, when there's, like, because you can play, like, multi is it Resident Evil 6? Is that the game? No, I think it was earlier than that. Hang on. Oh, okay, Resident never mind. Then, it's, then it wasn't this, yeah. I think it was 4, yo. Yeah, it was 4. 4 is a good uh, game. Resident Evil 4 is good. It's, like, one of the best ones, apparently. And I only got through, like, one level, unfortunately. It was at a friend's house. Um, yeah. But but it was very nostalgic because it feels like so many of the games that I played growing up. I mean, it is one of them. Like, the, it's that time period. Um, yeah. They made a remake, didn't they, of Resident Evil 2 or something? That's apparently really good. Yeah. I feel like I want to play those games again. I really like the design in those. Um, but, like, it's so funny because if, like if you look at the president in Resident Evil 4... Yeah. Um, uh, he, I don't know. Uh, it's it's like it's it's a compound of so many white men. <laughs> I love it. It's yeah, like, it's, it's like, like when like uh, of of Biden and George yeah. Bush and like tons of presidents of the U.S. before. It's like so they good. made it. It's like they did it like a generator of like um, of like uh, the most. Like here's here's like all American presidents just mashed together and here we're created the ultimate president. Man, yeah, if you like look at Romanian idea. politics, they have so much to grab onto. It's like better than American uh, politics. Missing out. No, but man. it's 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 just the way they look, man. They just look like um They just they just they just look such like a such a generic I don't know man, it's like I'm gonna was it Marion on the stream at the point? I don't know. Was he? I don't know. Is Marion in the chat? I remember to Dorel. Well, I ish the colo. Well. 
Alex uh, Negra is over uh, there somewhere in the void of the internet. But yeah, it's something. It's, it's like something about. Um... You guys need to talk more about Japanese stuff. Remember that the stream a few weeks ago with Tio had alcohol and then talking about hentai. It was so funny. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> I need some. I need some booze right now. Mm. But Man, I mean, it, yeah. It, yeah. He, didn't, it, he didn't have me there. I'm. I'm like a certified expert. <laughs> I mean, I really don't, pulling out like, glasses. It's kind of funny though, cause um, like academia. Nice, Alex. You know, like. like Studying Japanology. Um, wait, wait, wait! It's actually dead, called Japanology. It's actually called Japanology. Dead ass. Um, like you have lectures on, like, Japanese, like lolicon culture or Japanese sexuality and stuff. And like hentai actually gets brought up and put in slides at university. So that's like a very trippy. Part what, of what did they say about it? Because I'm actually curious. What did you study exactly? Well, um, I took a module called um, Japanese Popular Culture, and during that module, like near the end, you had to write an essay based on a conference that we went to, which was essentially our professor, who is amazing, uh, bless her. She is called Jacqueline Berndt. She is half German, half Japanese. And oh, wow. she's Bridget. She's now called Bridget. No, um, oh. but she has a really unique perspective because she grew up, uh, you know, like experiencing both Japanese and uh, like Western European mm -hmm. culture. Uh, if you, yeah, I guess most people consider Germany a Western country. Anyway, um, so she has a lot of contacts, obviously, because she's like a professor and a doctor and a researcher and a leading expert on on Japanese studies, and she invites. She invited people from all over the world, from various universities, to give lectures. Um, so we had a guy called Patrick Galbraith, who is most interesting, in my opinion. And um, I ended up writing on in my, my final essay during that module. And so what he was presenting about was actually... Um, <laughs> his presentation was called The Lollicon Guy, because that's what he gets identified as. Because he researches a specific place in Tokyo called A Akihabara. Mm -hmm. And um, Akihabara, for those who you know don't know, which is most people who are not Japanologists, I suppose, um, is a district in Tokyo that's considered to be widely pretty taboo. It's like the, it's the otaku district. It's where... Like, uh. the nerdy, um, usually single, like, very isolated men who live through, like, anime and video games and escapism go. And, nice. I mean, they're, they're per perceived by, like, polite society as being sort of, I mean, in a way, social rejects. Because there's a lot of pressure socially in Japan to be, and so you know, like, all of them. productive, <laughs> productive, um member of society and like a, a family person and and have good morals and because like conservative sexually and stuff those poor um, people oh, yeah. oh no i can't believe it. okay cool cool they're Hi. not very they're not very big in japan as some would say big in japan. i mean it's very generational so like i would say it's slowly changing with time and whatnot but um there's a lot of social pressure to be what is conceived as like seen as normal basically get a family um, what does my yeah. father tells me? Uh, get married, plant a tree, and have a family, and make the gene gene go further. Yeah, that's what he tells me. I love to plant a tree bit. It's so yeah. Like, yeah What's it's with just the a... tree? Yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> no, little no, bit, it's stay, a stay, stay. This is what he says, Dora. In life, a woman. Well, he says man, but whatever. I would say as. A man, whatever, a person, let's say person because it's neutral, whatever. A person should um, plant a tree, marry, and have children. And I, and I asked him, like, what's with the tree thing? Symbolic. I'm like, okay. Like tree. <laughs> Symbolic. <laughs> like Social tree reject, though. just incels, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, kind of like Western incels, I guess. Or, um, like, I, I, wait, I will stop you here picture. a little bit. I was so um, fascinated because I had no idea what an incel is until Wilhelm told me. I think it was Hendrik as well. I, it's fascinating yeah. that the word incel like, even exists. Yeah. yeah. 
it was a coined term by a woman, funny enough, which is what I think is the most fun. I think it's so interesting how that is. Um... Uh, yeah, that's really funny because they often use it as like a description to like sort of engage in almost a, like a self-pity or like some yeah. like there's a narrative on a lot of insult forums apparently that like they're the disenfranchised part of the male population and like yeah. um, we're involuntarily celibate and like I need to uh, listen to I that mean, interview with the incel by Dr. K. I'm so curious about that one. He has so many, I feel like. I mean, yeah, like the the rallying cry really is like... But is this a problem like for mostly men? Like... It's not really... Yeah, like... I mean, the incel community is 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 mostly men, yeah. And it, 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 they it, perceive it... that like celibacy is an exclusively male problem uh, because I guess... Like, it's not seen as much socially as a problem when a woman can't get laid. It's not... Like, if anything, a lot of countries see it as a good thing if a woman's, like, virginal for a long time. But, I mean, I guess recently that's changed. Well, um, depends on... It depends with who you're talking about. Oh, for sure. Um, what did what did my biology, to uh, my biology teacher in Romania, what did she tell me? Girls, a woman... <laughs> Girls, a woman is like a cake. You don't want to. You know, you want to keep that cake, you know, fresh as long as possible for the right person to come and cut the cake. And I was there, what, what the fuck, what, how, was, how old was I? 15 or 14 or some shit. And I hear her saying that and I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? about? Yeah, well, I don't even know what she's talking about. Oh, God. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you the incel vicky because incel incel the whole incel community is so fascinating right because it's it's like a group of men men basically being um, extremely uh pity and they uh, they pity themselves and they blame the world and um women for not getting laid and there's like yeah. these famous quotes like uh, I can't believe that a couple of couple of millimeters uh, uh, in my jawline can can change so much or something, which is like because they have like these things where they believe in like they they have all these reasons why they can't get laid, and one of the reasons is that they're I have a sort of weak or beta jawline, <laughs> and uh, the oh, funny wait, thing is you can wait, see wait people... what a what. Yeah, it, so, they so use you, you want to appropriated terms from biology that comes from some scientist who studied wolves like several decades earlier. Was it in? It wasn't in Russia, I don't think. But uh, th like the other ironic thing about their terminology is like um, the guy who, who studied those wolves essentially the, those terms were, and that theory was debunked that there is like a hierarchy within a wolf pack where like one is the alpha who's like. The most powerful leader wolf which essentially in in cell minds is like the the buff guys uh who get all the women and therefore the chaz, yeah. them. like it's a scarcity mindset it paints what like, the yeah. hell is going women on what the hell am i missing body. this is insanity yeah, what's I'm wrong with society yeah it's amazing it's... It. i mean maybe i, I, I just Have don't... You... Have you heard about the red pill community? Oh, now no. we're digging. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. they, they're, they're a bit of the same. Uh... I'm going to go to I the bank. so, Robin. That is... All right. I, I have no idea what's going on. I mean, it, it, my, it, it, my so family the, was the, very the, direct. The... Listen, my family was very direct with me. My dad said to me in Romania, my father said to me, Dora, the world is like a jungle. You play by its rule or, or if not, you get eaten. Only the strong survive. And I was like, okay, woman, man, doesn't matter. The jungle fucking eats you. I have to deal with it. That's how I live my life. Uh, under the broad <laughs> definition of innocent, that is cel celibus against choice. self uh, uh, Many incel forum users believe that high standard cells should not count as incels, claiming that online dating offers plentiful dating options for women, even in terms of men seeking long-term relationships instead of hookups. 
Many incel forum members also believe in not acknowledging fringe medical or mental conditions that would cause female involuntary celibacy, as they distract from the predominantly male distribution of inceldom. Under the narrow definition of incel against will, there are virtually no female incels, but many male incels. Owing to huh? men's general higher sex drive and perhaps their reliance on intersex... This is what... This is inceldom.wiki. So this is from their own Wikipedia here. Uh, yeah, uh, Glenn says they're huge mis misogynists. And yeah, that's basically the, the core of it. Is yeah, like, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I was going to contribute because I listened to a really good uh, podcast interview well, on Kate. Swedish... <laughs> on Spotify, on, um, uh, sorry, Swedish sex podcast invited a incel specializing psychologist who this is a man. This actually exists? This whoa, exists because it's a real issue in Sweden. I really, li I really uh, live under a rock. I swear to God, I live under a rock. I have no it's idea It's amazing. What's going on. Um, so in Sweden and the U.S., I know it's a it's a pretty big ass issue because um, it is very tied to like self isolation, and um, what the psychologist was saying was that like these young men are deeply unhappy, and most of them are like. Engaging in suicidal ideation, I, I most are very that you're unhappy. <clears throat> Sorry. And then, like, you need an outlet for those emotions. And then, um, like, because a lot of these dudes basically um, grew up on a lot of, I guess, American media um, and Western, like, media, um, where, like, there is this trope in some media where, um, like, female characters exist pretty much solely as a reward for doing some sort of quest or like um, completing a, a heroic plot line right um so like a lot of isolated dudes who don't really talk to you know communities of people that much and get like a realistic idea of of others um sort of perceive women through this lens of like uh, you should reward me with sex if I'm a decent person to you, because it takes yeah, a lot man. of effort for me to be a decent person, basically. Yeah. And I've actually, I've met dudes like this, um, who have gotten really, like, angry with me because I treated them in a friendly manner, and they took it as me, like, being sexually interested in them, and it, like, they... I met them as well, like... and then I started making fun. Because <laughs> that's how we survive in Romania, we just make fun of people. Yeah. Um, it's the only way. I was so I was just gonna add the last thing I was saying, um, which was, um, oh, wow, yeah, dude. like there was a really interesting bit in this interview where the guy who works with incels was saying um, that uh, a lot of these guys confuse Central points of video on incels. My God, the chat! Oh, I so sorry, Danny. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. I'm almost done, and then and then um, we can uh, get to the. It's a black pill of suicide. That's, that's kind of dark, but kind of funny. Uh, I was just, uh, yeah, making my final point, which is, um, what was I making? What I don't point know. was I making? Uh, Fuck. Know. Yeah, I was gonna say that uh, a lot of these guys um, get it into their heads that uh, intimacy and sex are one and the same, basically. So. Uh, a lot of them see any sort of emotional intimacy coming from others as flirtation, and they see sex as the only acceptable source of, like, love and connection that they can get, which is why they're so preoccupied with women's bodies and, and getting laid, essentially, because they don't know how to find that in, you know, like, their social group. Um, and this is generally, like, something that I've unfortunately noticed in Sweden, um, much more than in Serbia, interestingly, like, I feel like Slavic men are much more They go and take the women and go like, love. bitch, you sit in bed, I do it with you. This is what <laughs> Slavic men do. I mean, like, um, in Serbia, oh, no. it's very normal, and in, in Russia as well, it's pretty normal for men to, like, you know, hug each other, pet each other on the shoulder, even kiss each other on the cheek, like, in a very, like, I guess almost match macho way. It's like macho connection and intimacy that I love. Like, I love seeing it because it's clearly 
not like homosexual in any way, but the men are very comfortable with this like brotherhood, I guess, in like a way that is healthy and that I think is sorely necessary <laughs> to teach a lot of these like guys who are in silly. Um, cause it's, I don't know, it's like a whole human need to be touched. Um, so, I mean, babies die without touch, uh, within two years old, like if they are left untouched and have their basic human needs filled. This was observed somewhere around the turn of the century en masse in orphanages. Uh, they didn't have enough resources in a lot of European countries and in the U.S. to tend to individual babies. Um, and, but they were getting enough food and sleep is the thing. But no one touched them. They literally died. Yeah, like, I, I actually know about this one. Yeah, and, and it's like if that's how babies are, then I, I suppose it must continue later into life. Because, like, I mean, y'all know, you've been lonely. Doesn't feel good. Me? Oh, yeah, I had a long period of time where I was very lonely. But, yeah, I mean, I, during just my... Tone, really. <laughs> like, I have my opinion on all of this. I mean, opinions, I don't have really opinions. I, I'm trying to understand this situation because I have met... Uh, people that I was friendly, I remember I was friendly with them and so on and when I um, when I got to be in a relationship with Hendrik, they started uh, uh, acting with me really meanly, like at the point that they didn't even look at me, they started making fun of me and I just looked at them and I was like, well, what's what's your problem? And they started joking about me and just yeah. making uh, weird remar remarks and I was like I, f I think if it was now, me as a person I would just tell them, man, I'm sad for you. With that, yeah. to good luck yeah. getting anyone in your fucking life. I yeah, mean, I think that's a bit yeah. of yeah, that's that's a bit of the issue, right? Because oh, it's Torsten, like, it I'm gonna give this... you such big hug when I meet you. Boop, 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 I think, I think the, the the in involuntary like the whole incel uh, uh, community is is like it sort of becomes a self fulfilling prophecy because they start like hating Absolutely. women and. Yeah. And it's like the very thing you want is to have women like you, but you're also hating them for like being your one source of uh, yeah. fulfillment that you feel like you can't get, and you're putting all your eggs in one basket, etc. And then you, of course, it's gonna hurt <laughs> when you get rejected by one girl. Yeah. If you are like basing your life happiness on whether you can get a girlfriend to like you or whatever I don't know you don't have to I'm, and, uh, yeah, I, I can it's, say it's one so thing because I will let stories. you guys talk about it let me just say this is one reason I love the fact that Hendrik is a little bit of that kind of psychotic nihil nihilist is lovable douchebag whatever you want to call him he said whatever happens Theo you need to get used with being alone because being alone is very nice and I was like what do you <laughs> mean it's like if, 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 if anything happens you know we were just talking you will be fine you will be fine and it's like okay so it gets to a point where, you know, you have all of this Buddhist talking about it, like, learn to love yourself, be alone. Right. And uh, before I let you guys talk, here's my problem with today's society. And I noticed this from my mom. I, I don't care if it's personal or not. What's with the obsession of sex? I don't get it. What's with Media, people? man. So, no, I don't get it. Like, you I need to do it get... once per week, yeah. because if you don't do it once per week, you're mentally unstable. It's like... No. Nope. do it 15 <laughs> times a day. Yeah. 15 no, no, no. times a day. I, I have no problems. I have a friend that will do it three times, four times per day if she could. I'm like completely fine, okay? But it's like this, because uh, when I was growing up in Romania, there was this magazines where he said like the healthiest way to live your life, your sex. And uh, it's like a, a constant topic of sex. And again, yeah. this kind of stuff, <laughs> this, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. Because this is, uh, this happens in time. It doesn't happen all of a sudden. These were yeah. things in the newspaper, on TV, and have you noticed that now they don't really talk about it? And the men that I'm referring to are men that were living during that time, okay? They were reading mm. like, oh my, I, if I don't do it every day, I, it's not normal with me, I need to find someone. It, it's like, dude, if, if sex is the only thing in your life, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> I find that um, I think it's the the problem is a little bit here, to be honest. Um, Maybe I, I'm old fashioned. I'm a boomer. Let's just say it like that. I really think it's a problem. I feel like I feel like if you're one, like I mean, 
Maybe I'm well, oh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, li I'm trying to gather my thoughts. Give me a second. I don't uh, even know how we started talking about all. Oh yeah, I didn't know what an incel is. Okay. No, I, I do I think it's like a really weird. Uh, it's it's become this really weird obsession that some people have. Um, and it's like. But you also see it in art, the way the female body is presented. You, you know, it's very sexualized. But not only the female body, you also see that in men. It's, it's yeah. so interesting. It's all of this um, erotic uh, thing that is, in my opinion, you see the most... I don't get it. I always make fun of my friends even. Like when they take pictures and with their lips and their butt needs to be in a certain oh, yeah, position. Because then yeah. it looks a different way. Oh, or but you Theo, need to have I, a look like this because it looks a different. And I'm like, and I had a friend Theo. that told me, I need to use my uh, uh, my uh, uh, my posing face. And I was like, what do you mean by posing face? And then I look for Instagram, and she has the same face in all of her pictures. Excuse moi if you people think that I love my friends, but I just <laughs> want to tell them, for fuck's sakes, learn to love yourself because this is unbearable to watch. The yeah. amount of cringe I get when I see these pictures is insanity. I feel like it, again, kind of ties into money, honestly. Like, I don't know um, if it's money. No, I met people that are filthy rich and they're not going around. Te poop. Hey, do. Uh, I, see, I met a lot of people with a lot of money and I don't see them going around with cleavages and lips and whatever the fuck you want. I think it's deeper than just money. I I, think I'm not so saying it's the only thing. I think it's also to do with, like, this cult of youth, maybe, and, like, wanting to constantly i don't know stay no, but, it's, it's such a yeah. like it's such a it's like why it's used in marketing is because it's such a primal desire and it's such a it it, it um, yeah it's it such an it, it can connect mind. to your impulse buy sensation but like if i can step in here um i think uh like manga and anime is a really really good example of this uh like the japanese are really really aware of just how much it hijacks people's nervous system in their brain and i mean like their genitals basically and that's how you have like these whole cults about like husbandos and waifus yeah. on because but, but, wait um, I, like no yeah, it's in it's a very like um what's it called conscious part of making manga as someone who wrote their thesis on manga and has read shitloads of articles about the manga industry mm -hmm. um like it it's not even just the choice of the mangaka usually they get they get pressure from their publishers to make their stuff sexier because that is what sells that's what sticks in people's minds uh like the plot can be the plot has to be good for a manga to sell super well but uh what makes it really stick in people's minds is usually like oh there's hot characters, and maybe they're showing a lot of cleavage, or maybe um, a lot of the content is titillating in some sense. It's not always, like, pornographically titillating, but, like, there's a eroticism involved in manga, like yeah, uh, Tezuka, but... who's considered the father of manga. He's the guy who made Astro Boy, who's the guy who basically invented Japanese comics. Um, yeah, but uh, he... if, Danny, yeah. if I can interrupt you a little bit. I mean, it's not. I I don't think it's something wrong with that because sometimes I watch this kind of manga and it's hilarious. They kind of make a little bit yeah. of a joke towards this as well, like Wilhelm yeah, showed me this anime. You're a value no, but it was like, like this scene. Wait one second, because I I don't know. It was something with zombies. So you have this guy that puts his gun on the titties of this character and shoots, and then the other character kind of does a ma matrix things and the bullet goes through her tits just wa waggling like this. And oh, that was the one I zombie? showed you, yeah. yeah that, that was, I showed you that. It's yeah. uh, High School of the Dead. And I find that. that hilarious. I think it's so funny. So I don't want to go like, oh, we should never have all of this. But that that show crazy. is that show is known as like it's it's a kind of crappy show, I love, but it's love it, it's hilarious. Like they sort of um, take like it's a show that is like it's taking fan service to the extreme. Yeah. Where it's the point of the show is that it's so ridiculous in its fan service, like the fact that it's like they they shoot they shoot like a sniper rifle and it like the 
the woman has such big boobs that it goes between like the boobs flop <laughs> in a way that makes amazing. them go through the boobs. It. It's like it's yeah. insanity. It's uh, yeah. So like I was just um I just I'm just saying there's not necessarily like a sinister intention behind it. It's, I mean I think some of it is all in good fun. Um it's just like a very easy way to really like yeah, get people to buy your shit basically. I mean, a lot of musicians work that way too. Like if you look if you look no. at a lot of popular artists, like a lot of their appeal is visual because a lot of popular pop artists and rap artists are um particularly female artists are making use of their assets. Oh. <laughs> yes. uh, no Bil Wilhelm Wilhelm uh, tell tell I want to reach the people's souls. Yeah, that, that yeah. There's a there's a really funny. So whenever I get the time, I like to look at genius. Um, uh, wait, I want to read this first. Willem, do you remember Silver? Fa oh, Silver! I loved Silver Fang, man. Yeah, Silver Fang was huge in Scandinavia. But going back to if, Dani, because I feel I feel I'm, like I'm interrupting her a lot. I don't know why, because it's it's I usually never talk about this stuff because I don't know. Um, wait, I was gonna. We were gonna. You were, you were asking me something about. Uh, oh, the the woman on Genius. Yeah, there was a woman, female rapper, who was uh, saying in a Genius in one of those like explaining the lyrics and stuff. She was like, "I want to make music that moves people," and then she starts singing the song. And it's basically, um, uh, it's pretty explicit and pretty fucking weird. And, uh, and you're, and she, it's, it's like, it's such a weird, yeah, it was a very weird video when she's like, I really want to make music that moves people. And then she goes like, bitch, 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 shake that ass, bitch. <laughs> and you're like, ah. No, but I agree with uh, what um, Danny was saying that you can actually hear this in music as well. I think this is one yeah. reason I don't listen to mainstream music anymore. I find it so freaking boring. It's unbelievable. Uh, listen to Adele's new album. It's great. Oh, uh, Adele say. actually oh, liked new it. Album. She, yeah. she remade her album Red and it's crisp. Like she re recorded all her songs from Red and they're so good. Really? <laughs> yeah, 10 minute version of her song All Too Well. And it, it got on number one on the the billboards which is a first time ever in history um for like a 10 minute song to make it to number one so that's like a big deal it's so good like adele's adele's uh adele's i mean i love her new album it's so good it's genius i want to know from the chat do you guys enjoy us talking about this kind of stuff because i'm here to entertain people so i can take your money <laughs> for the people i just want to acknowledge what robin said uh you spend more of your life sleeping than having sex. Why aren't we more obsessed with getting a good night's rest? Amen to that. Like, I, mean, oh, my, I have no I idea, have man. I wish that was the Oh, case now too. I know what I wanted to say. You know the thing with Instagram and people? You know, if you want to show to the people that you're hot, go for it. Because I admire when people know that they look good and they show it. And then you have yeah. these other people. It's not that they're not good looking, but they kind of want to do it in a more intimate way I'm, I'm not sure how to put it in words like my friends and i i i, mm. I sometimes want to tell my friends what has happened to you what happened like all of these filters on their freaking face and it pisses the shit out of me because i know how they look like but they're so ashamed of themselves that they have to put i don't know what kind of fucking filter on it and then i remember you don't know just, they might they might like that they might just they might just no, I told, do that this is what i was going i was talking with one of them and i asked her like why are you putting all of these filters on you and she said it it goes better with the public that's probably yeah and i'm like okay so in the end you know all of this concept you, you know my my take on all of this feminism and misogyny and stuff you know people also accept it they're a part but of it's, it. it's, you know, it's women as well. So... Like my friends just proves that they want to show their body because they know it sells better. And then you have but other Dale, women saying this and this. So I'm like, whatever. Yes. You know, if I can pitch in as oh someone God. who's done like heaps of gender studies and queer studies and stuff, um, uh -huh. there's nothing within like academic feminism that dictates that uh only men perpetuate misogyny like 
some of the like most misogynistic people are women. Yeah, <laughs> like that's a lot what of I women hate also women. Say. Yeah. Um, and a lot of mothers teach their daughters really harmful ideas, and that's like something that is really important to talk about as well. Mm. Mm. Uh, we like friend some of the most hurtful us. things I've learned about my body and about like myself, and that I've been told about uh, what I should aspire to and what my like my purpose in life is has been told to me by women. So um, it's not like, yeah, I mean, like when you see feminism on forums and online, a lot of the time, especially on social media. The stuff that gets the most attention is the stuff that's going to be the most provocative and the most sensational. And usually that stuff is like your typical like straw feminist thing. So mm. straw feminism refers to this like this version of feminism um, that is I would compare it to the Westboro Baptist Church. If you're talking Christianity, think of like a really extreme sect. Like mm. Westboro Baptist Church, the guys picketing um, and girls, the guys picketing uh, in front of so guys is gender neutral uh, abortion clinics, going like you're going to hell. That's the equivalent of what you see on social media about feminism, and I think it gives a lot of people the wrong idea about what this very serious and like concrete uh, academic wow. discipline. About. Well, I understand that, but it's uh, like uh, Glenn over there said, it's uh, women are women's worst enemies, and most people that gives a bad name to feminists is women, to be honest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's unfortunate, because it's the same type of thing as, as like, incel forums, honestly. Sometimes yeah. you see online feminism and, you know, viral posts on Facebook, and you just, I think to myself... This is derailing a really important discussion that could be productive and useful to society and turning mm -hmm. it into a joke. It's becoming like men versus women and it's confusing a lot of young people in particular about what it was supposed to be originally, which is something that is rooted in, in a very humanitarian manner of thought. It started mm -hmm. as suffrage, started as try to get women to vote. It's uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, getting... <laughs> like, literally, just legislating U.S. laws, for example, um, so that rape is not legal within marriage, because that was legal until the 70s. So, like, you know, that's the type of feminism that I am interested in. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I was talking to a student over here, and she said that feminism started, of course, mostly in USA, and because we were talking about racism. It was very, very interesting. I never thought about it. Uh, the women, the first generation of feminist women, for what I understood, I, I wish she was here so she can explain it. For example, black women, they uh, were actually not allowed. And the, the female woman said, the white female woman said, like, if they get to vote before us, like white women, that's, you know, she was just belittling the other. Because this is one reason I have problems with humans. And when you put things like in places to kind of give them a fucking definition it's always those people that just makes a movement go to shit and we're talking about good movements like feminism it's like glenn said yeah. women are the worst enemy from the side like i was believed mm. mostly by women i was called oh yeah you know fat i don't dress up nicely i should take care of my face or in this in this way so it's just like uh, i mean men most men have always gave me very good um compliments even though i was called fat on the street by some asshole and ugly by another asshole i can't do much about that <laughs> yeah uh, i want to thank marcus real quick for saying uh love danny's insight in these topics i'm glad that yeah i told him that you're my favorite feminist and i love you uh, i like how Ma I marcus marcus went like marcus went like crazy he's like love danny's insight then like true true danny <laughs> oh someone is no i'm just joking Oh, yeah. exactly. so but it's 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 very true though. I feel like it's like the fact that just a few people give like a bigger group a bad name is is true in so many communities. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just a symptom of hive mentality. It's like yeah. a symptom of human organization. Honestly, like I remember, um, like I was talking with my ex about Life of Pi, which is a book about a kid that. Um, enters several different churches slash like religious institutions in the start of the book he becomes like hindu christian 
and Buddhist. And, um, like, my ex, I'm fairly sure, was very traumatized um, through a Christian context. He was from the East Coast of the U.S., and his family seemed to have some issues tied to that. And he got really, really triggered that I liked that book. And I think he decided in that moment, moment that he didn't like me as a person. Because I just mentioned that, like, oh, yeah, I really liked how it depicts religion as, as something uplifting and nice. And, um... I think that's really similar to how a lot of people react when you say the word feminism. Like, especially in, like, gaming communities, I've noticed, there's a lot of, like, oh, um, yeah, if you're feminist, you bra you burn bras and you hate men. <laughs> and sure enough, there are people who label themselves feminists who, unfortunately, do, like, really extreme shit. I don't think burning bras is extreme. That was a bad example. But you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um... And it's the same with, like, anything. Like, if you're talking, like, men's rights activists who are often scapegoated by a lot of feminists online as, like, being unnecessary completely and not having any good points. When actually it's like, no, nah, you guys are fighting for the same fucking thing. It's just you're seeing the extreme ends of the spectrum respectively. And you think that your causes are mutually exclusive when, in fact, they're one and the same. You just want people to feel good <laughs> and be happier, right? And it's well, the same right, as religion. Right now, most of the movements are becoming a little bit too... They're, they're being taken over by very frustrated people. Because I know there was a yeah. feminist from the old generation that was speaking up against extreme feminism. So they're, they're starting to like shift a little bit. Like some women in uh, England doesn't want to call themselves feminist feminism anymore because they, they're going into that extreme category that you're talking about so yeah. sometimes I, I think the internet is amazing but at the same time it's a pile of shit that just makes things worse than they already are or they don't even need to if you understand what i mean yeah. so uh, just use common sense that's what i always do I'm, yeah i mean I the, thing is, the thing is nobody would report or like like Here's a really, uh, here is a really reasonable and very calmly thought out, like, take or argument or whatever. That's not that interesting. People don't get interested in that. It's way more fun seeing people like, uh, like get really agitated and angry and have like really like extreme loaded opinions that they yeah, are loaded yeah. and loaded topics. I I read um, I read a a tweet um that. Uh, was about Critical Role. Do you guys know Critical Role? Uh, no. Uh, they're a bunch of ro they're a role playing community. They do like they do like D and D and stuff, and they're voice actors like uh, in games and stuff that are like participating. So one of them is, for example, the voice actor of uh, McCree from Overwatch. Oh, uh, what's his name again? I forgot his name as well. I I know uh, exactly. Something Mercer, right? Yeah, Matt Mercer. There we go. Right. Yeah, no, he plays a lot of characters. Yeah. He's like, he's like a Chad of the voice acting community. Definitely, yeah. But anyway, he, um, so they had this group and they were doing this D&D &D campaign and they, they started to get more and more like money from this and stuff. So they started to pull so much effort into making this like look really cool. Um, but so there, they started a new campaign apparently where they're like in the jungle and they're like explorers in the jungle and they dress up in these like explorer outfits and stuff. And there was this lady on Twitter, I don't know how I even saw this, who got so angry about this. Uh, and I wish I could find it. Uh, but it was basically, she was saying, uh, I am very disappointed and angry at the way that their costume costume choice they had when they were doing this as they were um, and then she was saying that I am a costume designer I've studied costume and fashion design and blah 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 and a bunch of like what she had studied in, in regards to costumes and how like this is it's blatant that they're they're promoting um, colonialism and uh, yeah. Sometimes time. those takes are just so far-fetched. It's what you would call mental gymnastics. Yeah, and it's like, it's it was, she had like 21 tweets explaining like why this is such a bad thing and why they're promoting colonialism and why they should never use these costumes and why this is awful. And I'm mm -hmm. like, and I'm like, they're just people playing a role-playing game. 
Right. I mean, there. Also, this, this, I, yeah. Sorry to cut in here, but I really agree with what my friend Nina Tichich said. She was like, um, no, she's really fed up with all this. And I think most intelligent people who use social media are. Uh, I like to think that for every idiotic comment like that, there's like 50 normal people who are capable of critical thinking, shaking their heads, going, what the fuck? And yeah. choosing not to engage because it's a waste of time and energy. Um, yeah. <laughs> because people who post shit like that can't exercise rational thought. And then you, you you become disenfranchised because of so many of these dumb comments. You're just like, is this the society I live in? Are people genuinely like this around? Yeah, exactly, right, yeah. Um, because it's it's like, I didn't engage in that thread. It was a bunch of people who did engage. Right, it's just uh, the worst creme de la creme of idiots, usually, yeah. right? And it's like, <laughs> it's, it's just... Um, yeah, I don't know. Like it was, it was, and it's like you choose not to engage because it's like it's so, it's such a dumb, like it's such a. Yeah, I like the phrase "protect your energy." It's very common. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Blogs and stuff, and it's a cliche, but I agree. Protect your energy. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna respond to what Glenn brought up because it's. It, I think it's interesting. Um, uh, he was. Saying that, to be fair, most organized institution, uh, institutionalized religion is pure poison and a hindrance in human and social progress. Sure, like, history has definitely shown us a lot of, like, real ugly, oppressive behavior among churches, among, like, various religious institutions. But I, I want to counter with, like, the fact that I think faith... Um, which, you know, is intrinsically tied into... There's a party going on in the background there, right? Yeah, it's the students. <laughs> so Just I ignore think it. it is really connected to the church, inevitably. And um, I think the church has gotten a lot of people in really horrible situations through really horrible shits. Um, both individually and as community. So, like, my favorite example is black yeah. slaves in the U.S. And today's black people in the U.S. Um, I think... A huge ass tool for them to survive really harsh social conditions in their country where they're per like they are persecuted consistently um, it's not even controversial to say and um, one of the things that most um, like accounts by black people that I read um, have in common is this this sense of faith and community which is really really tied to the church and like, that's one of the strengths of the church. Um, so, first of all, it, it fosters this sense of togetherness that sometimes can be hard to come by in certain places. But also, this whole thing with the Bible and Christ and, and belief um, is honestly what keeps a lot of people from, like, offing themselves. I mean, I could give a personal example and say, uh, my uncle, who was drafted into the military during the Yugoslav War, which is the bloodiest Euro European conflict since World War II. Uh, this was in the early 2000s. He, like, before he had been, I think, at least agnostic. Uh, agnostic. He was maybe an atheist, even. And he came back from that so traumatized and, like, just barely capable of functioning. And, um, Damn. and he, ended up, he ended up getting baptized in the Orthodox Church. And I think it was one of the only things that got him through it because he didn't like a lot of um, time periods and societies don't have the mental health resources that we have today. So priests, for example, and, um, you know, rabbis and stuff, they function mm. a lot like contemporary uh, psychologists do. Mm -hmm. They're a listening ear for people who are really lost in life. And I think that's been a really major function of the church for, for centuries on end yeah. that I don't think we should look past either. Because I don't like the... Like, I don't think anything's that simple, you know what I mean? Like, no. I, really? So why would... Oh. Yeah, like... I thought it was very simple. I mean, we as humans, we're very simple. We can be read with such ease. I'm just joking with you. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. It's I like know what you mean. there's a lot of beauty here. Um, I don't want to completely um, just write religion off, even though a lot of you know horrible human crimes are justified, unfortunately, using mm -hmm. religious texts. 
So, um, I chatted your ears off, and someone else should take the floor. Now, I, I, <laughs> it's like I told Marcus, you're my favorite person because I know we have such opposite views. You know my views, and I know I don't your think views. views opposite. <laughs> what? Personally, I don't think they're opposite. Uh, I think you just have a more fluid way of seeing the world, and I like trying to structure things into boxes a little more, maybe. Yeah, I, I think I'm more like Hendrik. I, I just want to be one of those people that can make fun of both sides, in a way. Oh, you should yeah. watch. Oh, I got a video sure for you. Words, this, uh, but I like uh, it, a, Yeah, anyways. <laughs> Uh, That's so sad too. I also like you. Yay! This is way, this is soon. way too. This Sorry. is way too calm. We need to we need to dramatize this more. I don't You're know. a fucking bitch. You know we need to invite Marcus one day on the stream. That's gonna be really fun. Glenn and yeah. Marcus, there you go. They're being Marcus talking is, over there. Huh? Marcus is like the guy who's always uh, showing up from school. He's like the one person who always shows up for the streams. I know. I noticed that. I uh, I like that. So so um uh again Gwen is saying something really interesting. Um Glenn again. <laughs> God yeah. damn it. Glenn again. <laughs> We're gonna get into it again. But um he's saying Christianity historically has almost always been an obstacle against any progressive advance, be it in medical science, education, civil rights, birth control, disease control, environmental issues. Sure. Um yes and no, because like look, during the Middle Ages, the church was I think one of the main, if not, like, the thing that got people literate in Europe. And that was a big-ass stepping stone, because no one could read art. shit for the Roman Empire. Art. What? Let's not forget about art. Sorry. Yeah, that, that was my next point. So, oh, sorry. Especially in the Renaissance, like, look at all these amazing masters, like Da Vinci and Michelangelo. Yeah, they were funded by the church, they were policed by the Pope and his goon. Pretty, yes. like... Hard. Yeah, they were not the Pope back. free to do what they wanted <laughs> with their art. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. a lot of the financial support for artists throughout the ages in in Europe has come from the church. Um, they were rebellious. And, the artists, no, they were yeah. very rebellious. Yeah, 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 they were fighting oh, yeah, their no, own they... messages into the artwork. Absolutely, yeah. and it's really funny because like there's so much like gay shit in Michelangelo's work, for example. Love it. And he was, it's like he was giving the middle finger to the church all the time a little bit, even though they were funding him. And I think that's hilarious and very, um, yeah, I guess funny. Um, what was the other thing I was saying about the church, though? Um, uh, I think, like, going back to what Teo was saying about, like, making fun of both sides a little bit. Uh, actually, I don't know if that's what I mean. Um... I'm trying to say, like, crusades and organized oppression and fucking, like, violence that's rationalized as being holy. I think that, again, just, it seeps into the whole thing with human nature. Mm. Uh, you can make all sorts of connections to, like, our physiology and to the fact that there were language barriers between countries and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um... So, like, the fact that, like, the crusades that were enacted by the church, where, like, there was a holy war be between Christians and Muslims, and, like, I think a lot of that type of thing was also the, the product of people not being able to literally talk to each other, because, and, and they were scared as shit of each other. Um, yeah, yeah. And I don't think it's all the church, like, a lot of that is people being scared and then being like, Oh yeah, well, we believe in Christ, and Christ is awesome, so we're gonna, like, rally under his banner, but what we're actually doing is acting out of our own fear. Um, and then, uh, uh, inevitably, because religion is a big part of your society, that's going to color, like, the narrative you create surrounding war. So then it ends up looking like the church is responsible for, like, a lot of things that are kind of, like compulsively tied to just how humans are wired and but we kind of how we evolve. Like your point, Fedora, this is very interesting because it's pretty much what's happening with feminism, you know? It's, it's like bad people at the, at the fucking wrong time, I swear to God. Oh, yeah. God, sometimes people pisses me off. I'm like, Hendrik, I hate everyone. No, don't. I like Marcus. Marcus is okay. 
You like me. Huh? You like me too. Yay. I hate Bill. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm very happy that I that I don't get a beating when Theo is away. I get a break. Uh, I'm just waiting for the day that you're like, Theo has given Will a sock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's free. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, uh, Glenn, let's see. Uh, I love what uh, Robin also said. Whenever you pick a side, you have to compromise your views, like ignore certain aspects of the movement, right, left, religion, atheism. I think Robin is kind of like this. I'm like, I'm like my dad. Listen here. My father in Romania taught me this. Dora, whoever oh no, you talk to, he actually said this. Dora, whoever you talk to, you know you're smart, right? I'm like, okay. Get to their okay. level. Get to their level. This is what my dad said. Get to their level, but always be above them. I'm like, oh my fucking God. I, I love my dad. Because here's the thing with my father. He was working as a police uh, officer on the streets. How do you call it? Like, um, car, car officer? What, what do you call this? Um, car, yeah, car man. Yeah, no, man police. Of... Police hand handling like traffic jams and then he... Traffic control. Oh my god, he saw some really nasty shit, I can tell you that. And he had to deal with different type of people, like CEOs, the lowest of the lowest, how do you want to put it, I don't know, like all branches. And he told me that everybody has something in common. We're all angry, desperate, and we're nothing but a pile of full emotions and it depends from where you're coming from even people that are super rich are destroyed inside i've met people that were very rich but very unhappy so <laughs> unhappy. Bro. yeah Bro. It, it, this is this is how i like to see the world i try my best to not put myself in a box i try my best to oh, see yeah, no, me too. And, and like that's everything. what i meant that's that's what i meant when i said take my whole ramble about capitalism and Instagram with a grain of salt. Um, and I also, I, I'm not an absolutist, and I don't think any person who's intelligent is an absolutist. Mm. Um, that's something my, my dad taught me. was like, the moment you think you know everything is the moment you're an idiot. Mm. <laughs> because humility is what really keeps you evolving and, and actually makes people smarter. Because, you know, it ties into curiosity and keeping an open um, uh, Glenn Peterson is damaged because uh, he took history. I feel you, man. Um, I, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's bloody. It's hella bloody. And, uh, like, even if the freaking Bible is bloody, like, there's so much killing in the Bible. Yeah, man. God is, uh, God is quite a, quite a killer. What can I say? Everyone on this stream right now is going directly to hell. Yeah. Being seen. We'll have a party. It'll be yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, hell is not that bad. You've seen South Park. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Love it. I've, I've seen the Book of Mormon. That was something. Um. Oh. It's it's a fucking good musical. You should listen. I think you would love the Book of Mormon, too. It's like right up your alley humor, humor wise. <laughs> okay. It's by the guys who made South Park, and the humor is the same. Oh, um, okay. It's a, it's a really good music. And, um, God, what was I going to say? I what were we talking about before this? Fuck, do I know? We talk about everything, to be honest. Uh, uh, right, knowledge and knowing, right? Knowledge. Uh, I know everything. Oh, yeah, no. I was going to mention, mm. tied to what you said about rich people, um, I grew up around rich people. Like my family, oh, my yeah, mother is I from. Imagine. My mother is from Montenegrin aristocracy. Like her family is legit upper class on her dad's side. Um, and my, you know, my dad has a job that exposed me growing up to tons and touch of very high status rich people. You know, like he has met a lot of famous politicians. Um. And I can tell you right off the bat, as someone with that life experience, more than not, rich people are really unhappy. <laughs> and that's what I'm getting at yeah. when I talk about capitalism. And uh, the way that I think, I think it sometimes throws us off the course of what actually fulfills us and teaches us um, that the way there is money. And uh, like, also, let me just, 
make it very clear um, that even though I have an East European background, like I don't think communism is the solution to everything. I don't think Marxism is the solution to everything. Um, because, oh, why? <laughs> yeah, no crazy shocker. Um, the Swedish model is the solution to everything. Duh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Swedish model should be used everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We need a um, Gustav Vasa again, you know. Yeah, fucking uh, make Gustav Vasa great again. <laughs> what happened? We need him to come back. Also, I love this. I love it. I I need a hat with make make Gustav Vasa great again. <laughs> I remember. I remember. I did a poster in the school when um when uh, no not in school we can't be in school i remember making a fun poster with carl carl the 12th of sweden being like make 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 sweden great again vote for carl the 12th and just showing like this like what sweden like what sweden used to be and what sweden is now and how we we're gonna take it all back <laughs> that was uh, uh that was a good poster i wonder if i saved it somewhere i should have Build a Vasa. Yeah. We need to. Oh, isn't there someone who's someone Vasa must here. have made someone must have made like a cap saying make Gustav make the Vasa like make Vasa Ethan great again or something that would have been great. Um, I think we need a Vasa voyage too, like the boat that that just sank within fifteen minutes of departure because yeah. uh, the king interfered in the art in the building of the boat so much he wanted it to be aesthetic. Man. And, yeah, uh, he, he understood, he got it. <laughs> but then uh, the uh, guy who was supervising, like, I think the engineer who designed the boat. Is it called an engineer? Boat designer? I don't know. I um, think engineer, right? Yeah, like, the engineer designing the boat was too scared to tell him no, because he's the freaking king of Sweden. <laughs> and then it... Yeah, he would probably die if he said no, right? <laughs> it's like... Yeah, well, if he, he still yeah. died because the boat, uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at least he had hopes. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it turned into Titanic before Titanic ever existed. Like, it's, it's Swedish Titanic, basically. One would even say that it's a trendsetter. Yeah, well, it, it was the original. Like, all these hoes are just imitating. Yeah, exactly. Like, honestly, like, what? The thing is, it's like, I always like how like Gustav, like uh, the Volta ship is like one of the oldest ships they've ever been able to recover, and it's like yeah, because it fucking sank in the harbor. All yeah. the other ships worked, so they sank at sea. I'm not being paid to advertise for the Volta Museum, but it is legit the best museum that I've been to in Scandinavia. <laughs> like, on how dare you? <laughs> Sorry to monetize your um your stream like that. Maybe you could get funded. By the Vasa Museum to you. Vasa, Vasa Museum yeah. sponsor us. We've we've marketed you. No, yeah. come on, give us some money. It's the best. It's a disease, just like um, Marcus said. No, I mean like Mark. <laughs> Capitalism is good for a lot of things. That's something that should be acknowledged too. Like, um, you know, globalized capitalism is what brings us freaking like Game Boy Advance from Japan. You know. <laughs> this this yeah. is how I see it when it comes to politic uh, politics and stuff. I think no one way is the good, no one way is the best way to take. Like all the time when you pick one, you go to the extreme of that one. So we need to have a balance between all of this. So even though we make fun of oh. Sweden, it has a little bit of that balance. I mean, yeah. fuck all yeah, of you. Go and live in Romania for one year. Listen, and then we speak. listen. Only, only the Avatar, the master of all the four ideologies. <laughs> Can wait, wait, create balance that? in the world. <laughs> what are you talking about? That when the world needed him the most, he disappeared. Wait, I'm sorry for laughing so loud. Oh. Hey, Wilhelm, everything changed when the non fungible tokens attacked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's just a, an army of those monkeys. Oh, God. It's uh, funny. 100 years later, and yeah, then it's like. Who would it be? Who would it be in like frozen in an ice cube? Yeah, I, I really like what Glenn is saying again about capitalism permeating everything in society from how people are viewed to how we interact with each other. I, I think that's true in terms of like globalization that has been really driven by industrialization and by like, yeah, colonization. Like it's all very interwoven. Um, yeah. 
and and um, uh, this this quote unquote dark side might just be termed by some people as you know quote unquote greed, like that might just be what you call it, or you could go all economy scholar and start you know arguing that oh this is the consequence of an unregulated free market, and you could be like this is not what Adam Smith envisioned, etc. Um, so it, it oftentimes comes down to just like which words are you picking to describe the complex, ever interacting, like nuanced forces of the universe, um, mm-hmm. which is what I'm getting from what Theo was saying about not ever picking sides because <laughs> play it safe. Yeah, yeah. Um, the- like, yeah both of the- those things. I think when people talk about capitalism, they're trying to describe this insidious. Yeah, just like out of control um, power structure that is really, really tied to the U.S. and to like fucking yeah billionaires and not paying like rich people not paying enough tax basically. <laughs> I don't know, and like advertising culture, which I think is really important to be conscious of because it ties into like the whole thing that Teo was saying about like airbrushing like uh again i think like instagram and tiktok culture and uh yes yeah but Uh, then if you look at i have my opinion with the taxes and all that shit but yeah i get you but uh, it's interesting because if you go back in time you see similar patterns on like a micro scale or like a less extreme scale if you look at like the renaissance and how nobles interacted with like beauty ideals and stuff and you know monarchic families if you compare them to hollywood actors today and actually i i heard this from uh Turgair. uh he was saying how like contemporary musicians and hollywood actors are kind of like the new nobility um and oh, yeah you see the same behavior with like commoners in the renaissance trying to imitate how like noble women dressed and stuff and there's some similarities between, like, the writing you find from the Renaissance and freaking contemporary tabloids telling you that, like, you're too this or too that. Like, your butt's not too big enough or you're too thick or too skinny and shit. So, some of these things are very timeless issues, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I find it interesting. I started listening to a lot of... Uh, I follow, started following a game designer. We used to work on Warcraft 3, uh, and it was interesting how he started talking about how companies focus on games have started to become more about the monetization, like you have a monetization oh, designer. Yeah. Asmon Gold was talking about this as well when he was interviewed by Dr. K, so yeah. Yeah, I watched that today, what the fuck, Theo? Um, I didn't finish it, William. What are the odds it. that we're watching the same episode? Like My brother, this, my uh, Swedish this... brother! I love you. <laughs> I just added, like, yeah, I've watched that one before. I just, yeah, whatever. It, that's whatever. so weird. But uh, it, it was very interesting how, like, it's all about, like, how to, like, use the player uh, and make them consume more and spend more money on the games. This and is it's... what I don't like about Blizzard games. I'm going to be that guy and say that I hate Blizzard games because a lot of them are, like, slot machines. Like, they exploit the gambling part of the human yeah. brain. They're, yeah, like... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they deny you things on and off, and then they give you things to make you go like, "Ooh, I I like this uncertainty. I am compelled by it." <laughs> gambling for kids, gambling for kids. Oh my god, it's like I was playing uh, Guild Wars Two with uh, Torsten, and uh, they have like this plushy mount for the raptor, and I was like, "I need to get it. I need to get it." And Torsten was like, "Oh no, no, no just just relax a bit, woman, because you know my woman instincts. I just want to buy shit." So yeah, fun times. But at least with Guild Wars, huh? Yeah, go for it. I don't know. With Guild Wars too, I like the fact that it's quite chilled. I like that. But it, 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 it's just funny that you mentioned Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, because uh, uh, the guy he like he like he was a he was a campaign map you designer. You kind of stopped me from buying Torch. At uh, didn't say it in those type the... of words. Sorry, 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 yeah. sorry. Yes. Yeah. No, but he, uh, he was like a he, he was a level designer and campaign designer, or whatever, and at, at Blizzard and Warcraft Three: Reign of Chaos and the fro- uh, 
Frozen Throne. And then he worked on WoW. But he, he, uh, he, someone asked him, like, um, is there any chance Blizzard will come back? And his comment was, no, Blizzard is dead. Uh, everyone who worked on the game, the old, old, uh, the old games that you love, they're all gone. They're all Activision puppets. Uh, and uh, that's... Uh, I don't know. I think I I, I, I like that he said that because I feel way more relieved now that I'm like, yeah, I mean, that sort of makes sense. I feel like I enjoyed the old Blizzard games. Now, yeah, I think uh, a lot of AAA game companies undergo that thing where, like, it goes from a small team to a, a like, bigger production, and then the bigger it gets, the, the more... the more it's concerned with profit and not creative vision. And... Yeah. The, the harder it is, yeah, like the harder it is to keep that, um, this like romantic, intuitive, um, artistic spirit that Teo mentioned way earlier in the stream alive. I remember, what did I do? Uh, yes. you were talking about how, like, sometimes it seems as though, um, we prioritize, mm, like, uh, like our like more mechanical looking art over stuff that has soul and that's kind of the case with a lot of video game companies sometimes when they get bought up or when they grow in size um like the people involved change and the control gets handed over to like a publisher that's more interested in selling copies than they are in, in making something truly great you know uh yeah. and of course, like, truly great is obviously very subjective, so, you know, um, what some people find to be an excellent game. Mm. It's, it, it, it's also, like, one of the big things is that you get more investors in and you have to actually um, please the investors. Yeah. It's a big, big thing. Master, master, uh, please give me payment. But, um, it's interesting when you see, like, because, I mean, it's, in, like, there's a reason why game, a lot of games starting to have the in-game stores they need online because they want people to keep playing. Um, it's all kinds of stuff like that. It's, it's, and um, I actually, what, what was funny was um, he talked about how when he, when they did Warcraft 3, they, it was done when it was done. Mm. Like, they took two years or something, I think, for Reign of Chaos, and then they... I don't know, took way less for Frozen Throne. But uh, the point was that um, um, now there is certain times in the year you should release games. Like you want to release it during um, during the summer, during mm -hmm. Christmas and New Year's. You want to have those because people buy a lot of stuff there. I was just uh, going to say like all the gift giving and people have time off and yeah, so you want to release it, so they push these times apparently a lot to have their games released during certain times, so they're left with very unfinished stuff, or they have to compromise their gameplay and stuff in order to release the games on, yeah. on time. Which is, um, I mean, that's, I mean, I, the, I feel like the games that I enjoy the most now are like small indie games and stuff, because they're oh, just same. really good games. Hey, yeah, or like... dude. Sorry. Whoa, dude. Oh, well, I try. I mean, sorry, Danny. I was well, just dude, say eh? soap. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, I also do digital art, but this is uh, so I have my still life here. So I have. Wait, a what do you do again? Digital, digital. There we go. Sorry. So I'm <laughs> I'm painting digit digital from life. Digital. But, I, but um, guys, I failed so dramatically with the cast. I have to admit. Really bad. Uh, it looks I like the cast. I disagree. Okay, I'm kind of done to be honest. I'm so exhausted. So I'm just gonna we can chat a little bit more. Oh my God, it's 9:20. Oh yeah, damn. Let We've been streaming for three hours and 20 minutes, dudes. No, three hours and 18 minutes. That's close. <sighs> Whatever. Come on, we sorry, can do a Danny. Record. Sorry, Danny. Sorry, uh, Wilhelm, for always talking over you guys. I'm. I think my. You're not. You're not. Right. Legit, you're not. It's just that, um, like, talking via, you know, Discord or Zoom is always tricky because you can't see people and you don't know when they're about to say something, so you always accidentally interrupt them. Like, you know, nonverbal conversation. And we don't have. It. I guess in your case, you also see me, but you kind of see me in the past when you do, so... 
when I talk... I see I... you in the past. <laughs> so dramatic. 24-hour <laughs> stream? I don't know, Marcus. Should we do a 24-hour stream one day? Let's do a 24-hour stream now, man. You guys can see me while I sleep. <laughs> yeah, especially who's been sleeping for like three hours. Um, oh. Wow, Donnie, I, I, gonna... I, I admire you being able to be here on the stream right now and just doing this with me. Really, thank you. Oh, no problem. I suck at falling asleep, but I'll probably sleep for like 12 hours now. Yes. That's uh, good. Also, I just, I feel like I should take advantage of the stream and get some of this picture done because I find it easier sometimes to work on my art when I'm talking to people or when I'm watching other people paint. Hey, wait mm -hmm. a second. Hey, Wilhelm. No? Well, have we ever shared the Danny's Instagram? I don't know. I don't we, think we did. Well, get going, time, man. That's what reason I'm paying you for. You aren't getting any raise, any bonuses this month. Ooh, but I can't... Uh, can I find it like this? Yes, it's on Instagram. The devil. Wait, just uh, send me the, the link to your Instagram on... Because I'm not logged in on Instagram on the big computer and I can't... I don't know my password. <gasps> so give, send, the, send the link to your Instagram in, in on Discord and then I can just copy-paste it. You're talking to me? Yeah. I'll yeah. <laughs> Let You're so deep now, I can't even see you. Go. It was really fun doing the still life uh, digitally because with digital, I mean, when I when I use traditional media like oil, I get the sense of it. I'm so much more understandable of the media. But with digital, I really had to play with the color wheel, get the feeling of the paints, if I can say it in those words. So at the beginning, when I started drawing it, you guys can see. So I did something like this, like an idea sketch. And at the beginning of the stream, I actually said, ah, I should just go directly to color. But I did felt a bit insecure because I just don't get the medium. So yeah, we reached this. And I think I did no. pretty okay. No, that's uh, pretty good. I need to see compliments. Give me compliments. Dude, you're amazing. Give. Oh, you're so talented. Oh, give oh. me compliments. I, say, I give said, give me compliments, bitte still. <laughs> Da. 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 What did you say, Danny? <laughs> I said, when I grow up, I want to be just like you, Pip. Yeah. I'm the best example of a woman this world will ever see. Oh my wow. god. I was talking about Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna remark on Thank this. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, there you go. Marcus... David shared it. On oh, my Insta? Yes. Okay, yeah, it more. Took me... I need more compliments. Thorsten and David said that. Marcus, come on, man. Give me a compliment. At least I'm admitting to fishing them. And then Marcus says, you suck, too. I think uh, if, if I'm going to talk about Lollicon, we're going to need another stream. Because yeah, I yeah. literally, like... Yeah, uh, I wrote Wait. like a five thousand word essay on it, and I did a lot of research on. Well, not as much as Galbraith, obviously, but um, his work is really, really compelling and interesting. Oh, hm. we need to talk one day about. I I'm actually gonna try out um like some kind of Japanese art style one day just to experiment with it, experiment with it a, a bit. Oh, Marcus, you gonna miss me? Well, if you don't wanna miss me, you know, you can always visit us in Stockholm. I'm being thrashed. I'm, <laughs> I'm being thrashed by Nightbot for um, posting. Yeah, I'm here. sorry. Yeah. yeah, we should. Uh, we can give you. Um, uh, Is Danny a painter or just excellent wordsmith? If the first. Then please refer me to some of her work so I can check it out. Yeah, Glenn, we we po we a bit. I can't speak. The, the, the link is up. To the... This, the link... this Wait, I'm gonna uh, share it again because Glenn is on uh, YouTube. I did not mean to copy Danica Lundin's profile picture. It's supposed to just say Danica underscore Lundin. That is my Instagram handle. If anyone wants to check it out, um, I also have an art station, but uh, oh I don't know. God. I'm it's sitting ass. on the worst chair ever. My ass hurts so bad. Oh, you're great, Theo. Gonna miss you when I'm gone. Marcus! Uh, he's gonna what visit about, us. What about me, Marcus? Won't you miss me? No. Marcus is like, no. 
<laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's so crazy. It's so crazy, Marcus, that you're graduating. It it blows my mind that you're graduating. Oh, Wilhelm. Da. Do you know what he's going through right now? What is he going through, Marcus? What the, what is Marcus going through? The patchiness of how the oil dries out on bright areas. Oh yeah, it's the thing that you. Uh... Yeah. Do you want to know something funny? Yeah. I saw a bit of that as well in my painting. I know. I, I don't know why it's happening, to be honest. Uh, Nick uh, Nick said that the best way that he saw it was to use lead white. Yeah. Yeah. But ain't nobody... I, I really love being called a wordsmith. I just want to thank Gwen. Oh, that's actually a thing? Wordsmith? Uh, I think that's a real word. That is awesome. Oh. Okay. Hey, I'm going to Google wordsmith. If it's not, it should. I think there's still uh, some people in the school. Yeah, it's in the Cambridge English Dictionary, so. Yeah. I, a, a, a I, I've been sitting on this type yeah. of chair. It's like wood. Oh, wow, I see it, yeah. It's hard as a mug. Yeah. Oh, Anders! I, I just find, I just found, like... Hope you're okay, Anders Bandersh. Oh, wow, Anders, what's up? We need to meet up and go photographing and all that she is. No, oh, I found a, um, I found a, um, mm. a um, Twitter account that I thought you guys might chuckle at, and the name is the Troj, uh, the Trojan War was not Helen's fault. <laughs> And it's what? just a Twitter account about why Helen wasn't the responsibility for the Trojan Wars. Leave Helen alone! I just, She's human! It's so good. I just love these specific fucking accounts. Do you guys remember Chris Tucker? Or am I, like, way out there with my reference? Hmm? I remember Chris Crocker. Chris Crocker? Chris Crocker, those were times. He was the guy with eyeliner who was crying uh, on YouTube. Early days of YouTube. This guy who cried on camera about how Britney Spears was being treated by the media. It was very viral. Oh. He was like, please, Britney, alone. And he's legit, like, heartbroken. Oh, yeah, it's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're lucky she even performed for you, bastard. I love that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's so heartfelt. Leave Brittany alone. Leave her alone. I'm serious. <laughs> She's human. I just love you're lucky she even performed for you, bastard. Bastard. Wow. I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah. I mean, she just gives and she gives, you know. Dude, she dudes, dudes, you... dudes. We're we're going with this, but. The people on the stream want us to end the stream. What's going on? Because I'm done with my artwork. And I usually never stream until now. The people uh, on the have... stream that's 24 hours? Let's go. No. I'm just going to die. I just really got to sleep, yo. Yeah. I haven't even eaten. I had like some bread crumbs because my friends didn't want to share their damn pizza with them. I'm just joking. Yeah. Your, your friends. Your yeah. friends want to eat. Pizza. Oh, you should actually see Lena, how cute she is when she tries to say that thing like for a number, for a number, like without a number, without a number, like the Romanian way. She's so cute. Oh my god. But, um, Lena. Yes. Uh, what? My that ex friend. Like Benny the exactly, David. What? Yeah, yeah, alright, yeah. Finally someone understands why yeah. I do that. <laughs> Lena! Oh. Why the fuck is it that whenever you make a pop culture reference, I know exactly what you're that's, referring that's to. That's why we have you on. That's so I finally people understand the random words I say. Hey, no, like, it goes the other way. I think we were raised in similar environments, and maybe that's why. Yeah, probably. I feel, I feel like we're just, like... What was it? I made a reference. What the fuck was that? Uh, was, I need to it, was it Age of Mythology? Because that was so obscure. And I love. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I made like a, I made a prostagma or something. Right, right. And you were like, yeah, like, it was, 
that was so I sick. That's sick. I was like, this is so niche. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah baby mother. <laughs> oh, uh, the name of the Twitter account? It was, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, I lost it. Fuck. The Trojan War was not Helen's fault. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Robin is, uh, I think he's joking when he's saying, are you going to do wood blocking right now on the stream? No, yes. we're, we're going to end the stream because I'm actually exhausted. I don't even know how I managed to do this today. Yeah, I just got to say goodbye now because if I don't, I'm going to stay for Well, you need to wait then... until I click stop the stream. Hold your horses. You will go to bed. You need to raid someone. I don't know how to do that. I I, I can't. I'm too You stupid. press slash raid? No, no, no. I'm too tired for this. I, I, I'm Let's not gonna do, I do what I want. <laughs> no, it's Bill so has... easy. You're you're Bill... being you're being a gopaguska. <laughs> That's what you are right now. I can't because then I need to be polite Gloppa. and talk to the Gloppa. person. I'm like, no, I can't do it. I have to speak to the person and be polite. Listen, I will literally write you the command. All you have to do... I have to stay and write some more. I'm tired. I need to eat and go to bed. Listen, there's a guy There's a guy who's streaming Guild Wars. No, Don't you want to stream him? I, no, I know this guy. I, no, I'm not going to do it, Wilhelm. Can you stop, please? Yes, do it. No. Okay, okay. Stay, stay out. I just gotta pull the plug. I have to pull yes. off the bandage. So, so go. goodbye. And thank you guys so much. This has been fun as usual. Um, I really enjoy it. We always have really interesting discussions, etc. Um, I I hope to come back, and I hope everyone has an awesome. Yeah, so week. much fun, yeah. It was yeah, nice, Merry everyone. Christmas. Merry oh, yeah, Christmas. Happy you, go, New Year's and... you can leave, Danny. I will see you in Stockholm. Yeah. Ciao. Ciao. Uh, oh, Bella. We need to talk oh, about yeah. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Because I need to talk with the streamers a bit. Mm, Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Ciao. Uh, I didn't want to keep down anymore because she slept only three and a half hours. Jesus, but I actually oh, got. I remember something. My dudes, wait, ho, oh, don't say bye yet. We need to talk about this. Christmas what? is coming and New Year's is coming. How are we going to do the live stream? We're going to play video games. Should we stream and just play video games? I don't know. I mean, um,. When are you going to Romania? Next year, in, on the 4th of January. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, that's great. But do you know what? Then, uh, I think... Do you guys want to see us play, like, video games or something and just have it chill? We can do some art as well. I just... We, we just want to have, like, a chilly stream, you know? Yeah, well, I mean... Depends on the people. I mean, they have a life and family. I think we should just let it be and just communicate with people via... via something i don't know yeah i think it would be fun to actually just uh i don't know just we'll see, uh, we'll see what we'll do to be honest but man just just do this copy paste that and then do this just do a slash in front of it where do i need to do i am not even on my twitter account i'm not gonna do this now no you're I'm not on, on your twitter you twitch yeah twitch <laughs> look at look at chat Oh, in, I can't, in I'm chat. not even on Twitch or whatever the fuck you call it. Can I not yeah, but do you, it? Where do you see the chat? I, I, see, I see it on the restream. Yeah, but you can still copy paste it. On restream? Open, open Twitch on no, your... No, fuck it. Everyone, thank you so much. I, I will see you guys and we talk about it. Bye. I can't do it, Wilhelm. I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. Why, why can't you? Like, it's so... You just literally opened open Twitch and you just sat. I'm this guy, a this guy, I, this guy is playing. This guy is playing Guild Wars <laughs> PvP and he's having a blast. I love this guy. You should check him out. I'm gonna link you to him. He's South. Uh, his name is Sven and he's South African. Look at this. It's not loading. There we go. Twitch, there it is. Twitch, whatever. What is called Twitch? That's the one. Please let me be logging because okay. Am I logging? What are you doing? Are you still on? Uh... Twitch, Twitter, whatever it's called. So where? What do I do now? Oh, you're 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 still streaming? Yes.
Oh, lol. <laughs> I feel bad now. So just give me the thing. I'm, I'm not going to stay. I'm just going to do it and then leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, I so, don't know. Basically, I'm so basically what, I'm going to write this again, right? Yeah. So basically what you do is you do a slash. Where do and I then do you it? Type that. Oh, in the chat. So you write in chat. In chat, you do a slash. And then yeah. you copy paste what I wrote. Okay. I feel so stupid because I just don't have energy to do this. Like this. Yeah. And then I push enter, right? Yeah, exactly. That All should right. work. I don't, I'm a bit delayed, so that should See you, work. everyone. Te pup, Alex, vo pup. Pus, pus, till ala. And... No, yeah, no, you have to copy-paste the entire thing. What? Yeah. Oh, and raid as well. Oh, raid. And then space? Yes, like okay. I wrote it in the chat. Bye, 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 bye. Did it work? Oh, it's going. Ah. Uh, and then you have to do do right then yeah, exactly and then you have to press up there i think when you're ready to raid oh, now the worst bye bye okay merry christmas happy new nears you beautiful creatures ciao ciao uh, i'd not have fun i'd hate that now i have to listen to this guy talking i love him he, yeah he plays he's worse man he's, so he's really him. amazing he's doing Capitot, what up? Did I say that correctly? Hey, thank you. Oh, what do I do? I just... So you just say thank you. Raid or something. Oh, he's so sweet. Now I feel better because I did it. Oh. I... Oh, wait. I forgot to stop the stream here. And I... Oh. <laughs> Bye, YouTube. <laughs>